So welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health and Sewer Commissioner's meeting for April 5th, 2023. The time is 5.02 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting. Uh, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. Got to fix that little note. Uh, please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated. Um, if technical technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law, members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Uh, the remote participation can be found on the Deer, Deer, Town of Deerfield website under this uh, meeting, under the select board near the calendar. There's a toll-free number to dial in, 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And the passcode is 570012. On that um, link, you'll see a link to our agenda. On that agenda, you'll see a link to the Zoom meeting. So you can click on and um, attend by Zoom. So we'll call the meeting to order. Um, pursuant to General Law Chapter 30, uh, a section 21 a three and subject to the chair's declaration and roll call vote the select board may meet in executive session to discuss strategy for litigation judith rathborn v deerfield planning board and deerfield select board superior court civil docket number 2278 c v 0032 judith rathborn v town of deerfield et al Superior Court Civil Docket Number 2278CV00037. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the town. As chair, I so declare, and I'll take a roll call vote to enter into executive session, and I will invite in uh, James Martin, Attorney James Martin, Attorney Lisa Mead, uh, John Pachurik, and Casey Warren. I think that's it at the moment, right? Well, Chris Nolan. And, and Chris Nolan. Chris Nolan, thank you. Um, running our meeting, so nice. Great, perfect. Thank you. Um, so, I have a second to enter in? Uh, second. I mean, that's, yes. Second. second, okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. We will return to open session um, promptly right after this. We're hoping around six o'clock. So, uh, thank you all. Well, welcome back to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health and Sewer Commissioners meeting for April 5th, 2023. We've entered back into public session after our executive session. So um, uh, first, any public comment on any agenda that's going to be any items that are going to be on the agenda today? Anybody have any public comment? Chris, uh, do you want to update anybody on anything? No, no updates right now. Okay. okay, thank you, Chris. Anybody else have any public comment? No? All set. Okay. Um, we have a hearing uh, on Treehouse Brewing, and that's at 6.15. We'll um, commence with that in a little bit. Um, but we can hit on a few of our other things beforehand. Do you want to do minutes? Um, how about Slugman's announcements? Just real you quick. You want to do some announcements? All right. Yeah, Go ahead. April 10th. Um, thank you to Kevin Scarborough, John Pachorik. Um, Trevor and and I going to many meetings and Joe Comerford and and Natalie Blaif, we are getting sidewalks repaired on Sugarloaf starting Ooh. April 10th. This is so exciting. I can hardly believe it. Yep. Okay. Very good. And then the other announcement I have is Deerfield's Yard by Yard, April 8th, which is um, this Saturday from two to four is our launching of our Healthy Soils program. You can come and you can get all kinds of prizes. We're doing plants, we're doing books. Owen Wormser is going to be talking about um, the importance of healthy soils. Deerfield is the first in the state with our healthy soils program. And um, it's really exciting. So come and win a prize, there's consulting, all kinds of stuff happening. Um, so it'll be really fun. Great. And I will just follow up with 
in addition to the Sugarloaf Streets, I just want to remind people that Kevin Scarborough, the DPW, has committed to doing the sidewalks on North Main Street this year as well. So um, the nice thing about Sugarloaf is the state's paying for it. <laughs> and um, North Main Street, we will be handling as a municipality, but I'm sure everyone will be glad to have nice walking spaces along those two main thoroughfares for Deerfield, South Deerfield. Yeah, I think, I don't know if we gave an update from our last DOT meeting at all. I don't no, think so. I don't think so. So, right. Uh, so I, I, as a representative of the Board of Selectmen, went along with um, Chief Churik and um, Kevin Scarborough and Chris uh, Nolan came down and uh, we met with Natalie Blay and with Joe Comerford, Senator Joe Comerford at um, District 2 to talk about some issues that were um, have been working on the town is hoping to do the town common over um, in some initial discussions with DOT. Um, they had some a, a way in about our crosswalks being too long for just the way that the town is laid out there. So they recommended some some work to be done um, if we we're going to be permitting that. The issue is the state owns Sugarloaf Street, Park Street and Conway Street. So we really can't do much downtown without having to deal with state uh, permitting. Um, so we have been talking about uh, accepting that those streets from the state um, so that we could one, get access to complete streets grant funding and also have some say over what happens in our town. Um, would that work? But that's a long-term um, process. And it really, it you know, our hesitation is the 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 infrastructure and the drainage under the road would need to be you know, inspected or brought up to speed, or we just didn't want to take on a liability by taking acceptance of that. However, you know, we're not high on the list for all of that work to be done anyway. So we're kind of in a catch 22. So we've been working on several meetings with DOT and state legislature and representatives to try and figure out, you know, what's the path forward. And, and we talked about a variety of other things. So we had a second meeting at DOT uh, a week or so ago and talked about this and trying to come up with ideas and we also talked about the sidewalks that are in really dire need um again they don't have a ton of funding we were thrilled to see out of that meeting that they have scheduled to do sidewalks on sugarloaf street from 116 up to the grave up to grave street so that is wonderful news that's a huge expense and that will be such a a really nice thing. We've also been talking about, you know, having them do some camera work um, under the ground to figure out what the infrastructure and drainage looks like, what would need to get done. Um, so we're in talks of doing that. I've neglected getting them the actual priorities of what we need to get done. I work with Kevin a bit, but I haven't had a chance to send that list to him to DOT yet. So I'll work on that this week. Um, and then we talked about getting Bridge Street also of uh, uh, the dry bridge at the end of North Main Street on the docket that was on the docket 25 years ago or so and was pulled uh, by the town. So it's a little bit of a sore subject with, with DOT. But um, so we're new administrations, new people. We're all trying to get that back on the on the thing. And they're very um, they're in favor of doing that. So we've sent a letter of support for uh, moving that forward. Um, we talked about five and 10, all the things we always talk about, but so it was a very great meeting and it sounds like it's a very productive meeting. So we're still moving ahead on a lot of that. The other thing I'll talk about was um, Saturday, we had our Western Mass uh, Conference, um, which is, um, it's a summit that we, uh, several of us have worked on with um, rural towns and um, the planning agencies in Western Mass, the four, four Western Mass counties, to um, have a summit each year about rural policies. Um, the Lieutenant Gov we did this at the Delaney House, the Lieutenant in, in conjunction with MMA and the area planning agencies and the select boards um, worked. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor came, um, our new state auditor came. Um, we had you know great turnout, 100 and something nice. people there, and we took the morning to talk about rural issues and, and different bills that our legislatures are working on to try and push forward, advocate on when they come up for hearings at the state. Um, we can still um, lobby and put testimony in via um, Zoom so we don't have to drive down, but we are thinking about when some of the bills come up, um, taking a trip down and having our voices heard there. So there's a lot of traffic, a lot of 
momentum going to deal with the inequities between the East and the West. And it really has to do with population and formula, state-owned land, a lot of a lot of things. But um, but there is finally our voice is getting heard, thank thankfully, because of our great legislatures, Joe Comerford and Natalie Blay are hitting above their weight, um, you know, for population, you know, out there and they're and they're getting heard. And they're getting consensus. They're great negotiators, and they're really getting buy-in from a lot of the different towns and legislatures that are much bigger than us, but recognize that that this end of the state um, brings a lot to the state and needs support as well. So it was it was really great. Anybody else want to add to that at all? Or no, but no. I do have a couple of other things. Please, um, oh, okay. Unless yep. you you want to continue on the subject, Carolyn. Oh, I just want to say it was it was the reason why it was so productive is because um, it was very focused. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about school aid, chapter ninety, those particular formulas with the pilot, and yeah. as as Trevor said, and that's what's really huge. It's a formulas really disadvantage us. Yeah, and uh, we we have to have it fixed. Yeah. And the other thing that was encouraging is that all the communities, we were split up into a dozen or more tables, and we had a sort of mini charrette at the end saying, what are the priorities? And pretty much everyone was in agreement, which is always good if mm -hmm. if you're focused on three or four items, uh, you know, the lieutenant governor and the governor and uh, the, uh, you know, auditor can all focus and, and think, you know, logically about the, the issues. Um, two final things. Uh, Leary Lot is still in limbo. I would like to suggest that we put it at the top of the list of each agenda just so we have an update. Um, I know that Chris, and I want to thank Chris Nolan for um, working with um, Hamshaw. Uh, I think we're going to start to get some. Oh, Chris. Yeah, I was just going to say I do have an update regarding um, EV charging there. So we are having a site visit on Tuesday uh, with people from different stakeholding groups. Um, so Eversource, Universal Electric, um, Rivermore Energy, uh, Berkshire Design. We are going to have a quick site visit there uh, this coming Tuesday at noon um, and make sure that everybody's kind of on the same page to move this project forward because obviously there's a lot of moving parts with this one and we want to make sure that the timing is mm -hmm. sufficient mm -hmm. with installing EV charging technology at the same time that we're developing the parking lot. And did you uh, explain that? I think um, the person you're working with, Hamshaw, he's been on vacation or? He did just get back. So um, Chip Farnham from over at Hamshaw, I've been mm -hmm. checking in with him periodically about um, what they need regarding their legal correspondence. Um, they've been, in all honesty, the holdout on moving this forward. So we are just waiting to hear back from them. I was informed that he had a meeting today um, with Hamshaw himself, and hopefully we can uh, get some kind of answer from that because we do want to get this moving. Thank you. Yeah, and the last thing I would just uh, wanted to point out is that the live MBLC is meeting again in the next couple of days on the, uh, whether we're going to get, you know, how they're going to help us get additional money for the library project. Um, there are a couple of different options being discussed, and the MBLC is discussion about possibly giving three five percent increases um from the the last so a total of you know 30 30 percent of cost increases but there's also a, a parallel um discussion in this legislature about finding additional money in a pothole account that could be distributed for a different formula but okay. uh, nothing's been decided but Thanks it does look like something's gonna happen. That's uh, great. Yeah, any, any little bit helps for sure. Yeah. Thank well, you, Tim. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March eighth, twenty twenty three. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March twenty second, twenty twenty three. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. And then, uh, nope, that was it. Okay, good. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Um, okay, so.
Almost We're close there. enough to a public hearing. So I'll read this. Uh, notice of public hearing pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 19CN. The Select Board, as a local licensing authority for the town of Deerfield, hereby will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, April 8th, uh, 2023, at 6 15 p.m. on the application from Treehouse Brewing Company, Inc., located at One Community Place, South Deerfield, Mass. The Treehouse, uh, Treehouse Brewing Company, Inc. holds pouring permits pursuant to sections 19BN, 19CN, and 19EO to sell malt beverages, distilled spirits, and wine, uh, and holds an approval under section um, 19H, sell all uh, alcoholic beverages uh, throughout the licensed premises. Treehouse Brewing Company Inc. is applying to amend its Section 19CN pouring permit to increase its uh, Section 19CN occupancy from 519 to 1,494 and has filed concurrently uh, an application for an alteration of Section 19CN premises pursuant to section 19H uh, to increase the capacity from 525 to 1,500 to allow for the sale of alcoholic beverages at out large outdoor concerts and other temporary events. Meetings are being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room at South of Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Massachusetts. Remote participation um, can be, this can, this public notice can be found on our Town of Deerfield website. You can click on the Zoom link if you'd like to participate by Zoom. If you'd like to dial in, if you're watching on FCAT, um, the toll-free number is 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604. 1580. The passcode is 570012. So I'll call the hearing to order. And let's see, just make sure these are identical, right? People. Yeah. Oh, no, there are two, right? I just, I was just asking Mark, I'm going to start screen sharing as soon as he gives me a heads up. Yeah. It's part of his presentation. <clears throat> sure. Do I have two public hearing notices to read? There are two, yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. They, they might have been merged at one point. Did they get merged? Let me just look at this real quick because I don't want to mess you guys up. Yeah, I think I think at one point in time there were three. So what's that? There at one point in time there were three. One that had both applications together, and then two separate ones, which we did for the mailing. Right, and I think yeah, this one seems to cover all the things that we were going to do. There, there. Um... So, Mr. Chair, there, there would be two applications. There's one for an amendment to the 19CN yep. um, to, to increase the occupancy from 519, 519 to 1,494. Yep. And then separately, there will be an application to further amend the 19CN pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 138, Section 19H yes. to increase the occupancy from 525 to 1,500. Perfect. So I've covered that in okay. that one Great. notice. Okay, so we're good. I'm going to ditch this notice. Well, welcome. Thank, How you. Are thank you. you. Good evening. Good. It's wonderful welcome. to be back in Deerfield. Yeah, thank you. So introduce well, yourselves. Me first. <laughs> so, uh, for the record, please. I know. Be back. Okay. Yep. For the record, Mark Borenstein. I'm an attorney at the law firm of Bowditch and Dewey, based out of Worcester, Massachusetts, uh, representing the applicant. Right. Sarah Madger Morin, Chief of Staff for Treehouse Brewing Company. Thank you, Sarah. And Allison Maisley, Regulatory Specialist for Treehouse Brewing Company. Great. Thank you both. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah. Do we have the slide deck, Casey? So you want to share? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Can everybody see that? Yes, I think so. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you again for um, convening this meeting this evening. Uh, we have before you, as we said before, two applications related to the on-premises pouring at One Community Place, Treehouse um, Brewing Company, Deerfield. Uh, before we get into the applications themselves and the proposed uh, plans and the parking you know, arrangements, I thought it'd be great just to kind of take a step back and just evaluate evaluate where we've been, where mm -hmm. we've gone together uh, with with the town, because it's 
for the last couple of years, it's, it's really been a journey and uh, yeah. Treehouse has considered itself very fortunate to be in the town. The town has been nothing but cooperative throughout this process. So we really appreciate that synergy from the select board, town administrator, all the departments, everyone's really been wonderful to work with. So right. just briefly, if we could just go through the slide deck case. Sure. We'll start off. Just, I'm, I'm sure you members have, have been to the- A few of us. A few of you, maybe maybe not everyone, <laughs> maybe once or twice, right? Yeah. But the, the lovely indoor tap room, it's very nice. Like Casey, uh, the, the bar, the exterior patio area, which is adjacent to what we're gonna be discussing this evening. Yep. The indoor auditorium. I'll be there's a concert actually in the auditorium this evening. Oh, nice. That I fortunately will be attending after this meeting. <laughs> Good. Um, really exciting. So uh, this is just an overview of the applications that we previously discussed. Yes. Okay. Um, so just as a refresher for the select board, uh, Treehouse holds three different types of pouring permits on the premises: one for farmer brewery, one for farmer winery, one for farm farmer distillery. And so when you see the differences in occupancies, they pertain to those different permits. So there's three occupants for the, the winery, three occupants for the distillery, and the rest for the brewery. Most of the building is considered a brewery. So I just wanted to kind of explain that breakdown when you see those different numbers. Okay. So this is just the general layout of the building, just showing you where the brewery and the distillery and the winery are. So this is the, uh, the, built, the winter garden building. We call it building C. Yep. Um, I don't know if I'm coming through with the microphone or not. Yep. Um, next, so this is the second floor, and then there'll be the third floor showing all of the on-premises consumption area. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, next slide, Casey. And this is just an, an aerial, just to orient the board. Yep. So obviously to the, to the east, we have the uh, off-street parking lot. It's kind of hard to yep. look at it. No, go see, ahead, so go ahead. Me. Sure, hopefully I'm coming through. Um, obviously, we have the, the three buildings, and then we have the South Lawn, where most of the proposed activity that we'll be discussing this evening will be uh, taking place. Next slide, Casey. So the last time we appeared before the select board, this was the area, the South Lawn, that we, we proposed to license. And so that this area itself is not changing by any means with this application. The only aspect that we're discussing this evening primarily will be the increase in occupancy. We, we might be talking about some other aspects in terms of operations related to the, the pouring, premise, pouring premises and the pouring permits, but that's the, the, the meat and potatoes of this application. So next slide, please, Casey. So this, these are some photos from um, a summer concert that took place last year. I don't know if any of the folks have- if Is it a drive-by the trucker? Yes, that's yeah. correct. So it was, it was an excellent show. Um, what was the total number of, of people at the show? But 500 people. So um, as the select board will recall, previously when we saw the pouring permits, we we talked about the push for tourism at this site. Mm -hmm. The intention for Treehouse always was to cultivate a destination at this location. And that was also the intention of the town as well. Yeah. We worked together on the permitting. We worked together on the zoning amendment to make this a destination for tourism. And so the applications before you this evening are really the next level, the next step in terms of making this a tourism destination. So there's some great acts here. Um, I believe has Graham Nash come already. Yeah, he, Very nice. he did two shows and I saw both of them. <laughs> so as, as you can see, there is class acts, world-class acts that want to come to Deerville, want to perform at Trios's uh, facility. And so this proposed increase in occupancy will allow Trias to attract those acts because currently at, with the 500 proposed occupants, we're, we're, Trias is not able to bring those larger acts to the town. Right. So just a couple more photos here of, of, of the concert. This is kind of a view oh, yeah. from, from the patio. <laughs> yep. Okay. So one of the um, aspects of this application has been meeting with the town. Um, having discussions about what the town's needs are, what the town's concerns are. And we're happy to continue those discussions this evening. Ultimately, Treehouse wants to be a great neighbor, wants to do right by the town and make sure that this is a symbiotic relationship that's not disruptive by any means to the town. So as part of those discussions, we met with the town administrator, representatives of the health department, police department, I believe fire too, mm -hmm. maybe yes, separately. fire as well. Yep. And, and part of those discussions included um, concerns about how was Treehouse going to implement this. Treehouse hasn't previously done a 1500 person concert. 
Right. So Treehouse took a step back, spent quite a bit of time evaluating how are we, how is Treehouse going to implement this? And Treehouse uh, prepared this pretty lengthy uh, event plan, which has been submitted to the select board. And that, that plan will continue to be refined as Treehouse approaches um, these concerts. Yeah. Uh, it will Each concert will become smoother, will become more efficient, and Treehouse will learn from each concert. So there's, there's I'm just going to speak on some aspects of the of the plan this evening. Mm -hmm. Just go to the next slide, please, Casey. So this is the uh, proposed layout of, of a concert, um, or not just concerts, large scale events as well. Um, you'll see the stage to the west. Um, there'll be some tour vehicles further to the west. Uh, emergency vehicles could also access to the west. Um, there's a bar area, patio, merchandise, the mix. Um, the select board will recall that when we previously sought the pouring permit uh, treehouse contracted for a um, noise study. And the noise study that was proposed for that entertainment license uh, is consistent with the same technology that's gonna be used here. There's, it's not as if there's gonna be you know, more noisy speakers. We've evaluated this previously and presented this to the select board. Uh, in, in addition to, to the north, we have the temporary uh, toilet rooms, which I know we've historically talked in the town and there's concerns about the, the temporary toilet rooms. Happy to continue those discussions. Um, I will say that um, in our initial discussions with the town administrator uh, and the board of health or the health agent, agent, excuse me, you are the board of health. Uh, it was brought to our attention that there were concerns about temporary toilet rooms. We fully understand that. Um, I, I think the select board will also recall that we previously talked about installing a permanent uh, toilet room mm -hmm. adjacent to this area. Yep. That is ultimately the aspirational goal of Treehouse, which is to make this a destination where they can justify the cost. Right. I believe the costs were pretty significant to install those toilet rooms, unfortunately. So Treehouse contracted with their architect to evaluate that and the cost at this stage, just we could the Treehouse could not justify those particular costs. Treehouse subsequently evaluated some of the more permanent toilet rooms, the trailer-esque toilet rooms, if you will, and the costs to have those on site for the the uh, the concert series for the summer would be the cost to install the new toilet rooms. Got it. So expensive, pricey. However, Treehouse wants to ensure that the experience that customers have, the patrons have, and that the residents of the neighborhood observe when they visit the site will not be something that will detract from the the beauty of the site. Treehouse provides a world class experience to all their guests. They're not providing toilet rooms that are unsightly or, or you know, unclean. Yep, yep. unclean. That that's 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 not what's going to happen. Uh, so, so, and we can have discussions. Uh, but Treehouse is proposing these temporary toilet rooms for each event. Uh, at this stage, Treehouse is aiming for ten concerts this summer. That would be the goal. That being said, we're seeking the fifteen hundred occupancy, given where we are in the. Uh, concert season, it's it's likely that those concerts will scale up. It's unlikely that the first concert will be 1500. I'm not right. gonna say definitively that it, it can't be 1500 because some Depends great act, act might come through and right. Trias can land them and that would be great, but it will likely scale up, you know, 500, 600, what have you. But ultimately with respect to the toilet rooms, it's my understanding and correct me if I'm wrong, the expectation would be that the toilet, uh, temporary toilets would be delivered the day of the event or right before the event and be removed immediately after the event. So they wouldn't be on the property for the entire summer. They'd be cleaned. Uh, I think you mentioned that they might be potentially even new toilets. Yeah. So it, it's not as if this is going to be an unsightly endeavor. Happy to have further discussions related to, um, to the temporary toilet rooms. So is Amy Mann just 500? Mm -hmm at this moment. Okay, so <laughs> potentially it might get larger if we come to some agreement. I'm just curious, I thought I'd interject. Yeah, ultimately, um, some, sorry, cracking here. Um, ultimately, depending on what the select board does this evening, Trias will be able to evaluate the already planned concerts and potentially increase the allotted tickets. But that show is sold out. Yeah, I, I, I at 500. Yeah. noticed that, yeah. So. <laughs> I did my research and, yeah. you know, Preparation for tonight. So um, we can come back to the to the temporary toilet rooms, but uh, happy to uh, just continue the presentation. Yes, why don't we, why don't we do that? Okay. 
There will be further discussion. Okay. So uh, we, we heard concerns from fire and police related to emergency vehicles. Mm -hmm. Safety is paramount. And so Treehouse will ensure that there's a um, an access route for all emergency vehicles. Next slide, please, Casey. So Treehouse has been working very hard to find some auxiliary lots in the town. As you can imagine, there aren't a lot of large parking lots that can accommodate this additional traffic. So Treehouse's um, existing parking lot has approximately 282 spaces. Um, there's some additional space available on the grass. We have spoken uh, extensively with certain representatives of the town that have mentioned to us that the, the soccer field adjacent to the property is is not suitable during wet season, no, and we don't want cars stuck in there. So, really um, so ultimately, Treehouse had to find alternatives. And so fortunately, Treehouse has uh, reached uh, understanding with Yankee Candle to utilize their larger parking lot, their real retail space, and their corporate office. And so ultimately, both lots will provide flexibility. The understanding being the retail lot is the preferred lot because it's more spaces. It doesn't require as much staff. But um, the corporate lot will allow for uh, Treehouse staff to park there. So that way, the on-site parking spaces can be utilized for accessible parking. It can be used for um, folks that um, want to park on-site and would prefer not to be in an auxiliary lot for whatever reason. So just if I may, before uh, we go into the emergency plans. Um, so as part of this analysis, TRIAS also engaged their traffic engineer who previously evaluated traffic counts related to the earlier phases of the project. Um, they evaluated the proposed auxiliary lots, impact on intersections. Ultimately, they determined because these trips are outside of peak hours, um, and there's additional capacity at these intersections, there's not anticipated any negative impacts to the town in terms of circulation of traffic. That being said, Treehouse will work with uh, with the police department to ensure there's police details. Uh, Treehouse will work with Mass DOT to ensure that there's signage if needed on Route 5 to make sure that traffic is directed uh, accordingly. And as, as I said before, Treehouse will continue to refine this and improve it. So ultimately, if we find that there's one area that needs additional attention, Treehouse will pivot and make sure that that gets addressed. So it's it's going to be an ongoing work in progress, but Treehouse is committed to making sure that this works. And as I said before, there's no impacts to the town. So next slide, please. So there's a lot of information in the plan, I'm sure uh, you've read it, so you don't need me to go into it, but Treehouse has been very thoughtful about emergencies, uh, especially weather related emergencies. We're working with um, the building department to identify the preferred uh, evacuation route and shelter in, in the event of a serious storm. Um, and uh, we received some pretty extensive comments from, I believe, fire and police. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want me to go through them line by line or. What do you want to do? Kurt uh, is here in case you want to yeah. talk to him. I do Might think well. we're going to have a couple of people that would like to speak. So if sure. you guys do your thing, I think I might make a little bit of noise and move a table around. So that's fine. Do that. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Pardon yeah. Me. Why don't we just go through them if you've got it. Okay, them. sure. Let's so, um, so I think the first uh -huh. set was uh, from fire. Yes. Cool. So the first was uh, there was a concern about emergency apparatus being able to turn around at the south end. Um, the driveway will be uh, our response is the driveway will be uh, free and, and open for vehicles to turn around uh, and we'll ensure that there's no vehicles obstructing that that driveway. Um, there's apparently a trailer on the property that uh, was asked to be removed that will be removed from the property. Uh, there was a comment uh, asking uh, if uh, the recommendation that a fire watch detail attend security meetings that is of course acceptable and, and welcomed by treehouse uh, there was a question related to um, tap room would be open during performances it would be open only to guests at the concert we're not going to have right. guests come from outside and guests attending the concert so the tap room will be utilized during the concerts but specifically for ticket holders okay um there's a notation to update South Deerfield over Deerfield Fire Department will yes. make that change. Yep. Uh, we received that from, from police department as well. Uh, and there was a discussion about making the building itself the emergency shelter in the event of a storm. And so um, the, the building inspector is evaluating that. And if, to the extent that that's acceptable to him, that's acceptable to Trias as well. Okay. So those were fires comments. 
police, um, the police um, detective sergeant asked that the police officer in charge attend the security meeting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question about tailgating. Um, Trias will evaluate whether or not they would allow for tailgating. It's probably unlikely. But I don't, I don't, okay. So there won't be tailgating. <laughs> uh, so that solves that issue. But that being said, Trias staff will be around walking the parking lots, ensuring that people aren't uh, consuming in the parking lot and then going into, into the concert. Um, so beyond okay. that, there's a question related to security, that security cannot be armed. Trias says security is not armed. Um, there was a comment related to the required uh, police details or mm -hmm. police officers based on population. Uh, we'll update that pl the plan accordingly. Okay. There's a question about monitoring children or animals left in vehicles. Uh, there'll be staff in the parking lot that will be patrolling the parking lot, but um, you know, obviously, uh, Treehouse won't be able to evaluate all 500 or 600 cars on site. So we'll rely on staff to uh, uh, patrol the parking lots, but you know, hope that that people are acting responsibly. Um, there's a question related to evacuation routes uh, that will be left open uh, per the recommendation of the police department. Uh, there was a question related to uh, entrances and exits that will up, be updated in accordance with the police department's recommendations. So, okay. In essence, we'll work with the police department and fire department to make sure that all of their needs are met. Just one quick question. You mentioned that um, on concert nights when there, there are 500 or larger um, that people, general public can't access this. How do you notify the general public that they can't come there? So are they going to be driving up, finding out they can't go in and then be sending, you know, so it's just a question about how how you communicate to sure. patrons. Absolutely. Yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I mean, Treehouse has events at its facilities at various times. It puts out notices on social media channels. Um, as we discussed before, there will be large signage. Um, we're talking to our traffic engineer about uh, installing that along Route, uh, route 5. Right. That will require mass DOT approval, and that, that's acceptable as well, just to kind of let people know. Close the public, and only for ticketed. Okay. There was, I guess, one other comment from the from uh, Kurt that all provisions and enforcement of Mass General Law and, and 527 CMR 1.00 shall apply and supersede any language to the contrary. I'll, I'll, let, I'll give I, that to you. I think you might have gotten it already, but I'll. I don't know. Okay. One last Let's... comment from Kurt. Is Kurt on? He's here. Oh, here. Oh, hey. <laughs> there you are. Is that? Do I have that right? Yes. Okay. We all lost. Yep. Our, our, okay. Coming in the emergency action plan. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Great. <clears throat> Any uh, anything else? Um, we could have the porta potty discussion. Oh, absolutely! I'd love I'm, to go back to that. <laughs> sure. As you know, I'm not a fan of porta potties. I know. Um, several decades of experience with porta potties. Usually, the first couple that are closest to the walkway overflow. So, if we come to some compromise on the porta potties. I would want to be sure that we were um, having some staff check it mm -hmm. during the course of your event. Absolutely. And is it, if it gets to be full, just- Direct some, people elsewhere. Yeah, close it off Talk somehow. That would be a role of one treehouse staff or a, a group of right. treehouse staff, much like the parking lot attendants. Right, um, just to encourage use. I mean, that's just what happens. Sure. Um, you know, I'm really, you know, I've always been a fan of you coming and, and you've proved to be good neighbors and certainly we've had no complaints um, about, you know, your serve and the amount of service you give. Um, so I'm, I'm willing to compromise on this because I, you know, I do feel that, you know, that in the long run, it's much better to have permanent toilets. Mm -hmm. Um, but I am really, really against porta potties. So you don't need to put up a Cadillac building for the toilets, but as soon as possible. Um, and I, I just, 
somehow would like to make sure that this is reviewed so that we can agree on, I'm not, I'm not gonna hold you to something, but just we can keep looking at this. Well, if I may, this is, a, this is a, 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 a step, right? Up from what currently Trias operates with, with, with 500 people. This is 1,500. The goal long term is to continue to refine this and improve this. And to the extent that they, to the extent that Trias desires to increase the occupancy above 1,500 at some point in the future, we can have further discussions about porta potties and toilet rooms because at that stage, it's clear that Trias has the, the, the desire and the revenue and it's, it's a proven product. And I think at this stage, we're still, Trias is still trying to evaluate whether or not they can get the ax to justify the cost of this outdoor toilet room, because right. currently we're proposing 10 concerts. I mean, this isn't, yeah. you know, we have Indian Ranch in the central part of the state and, you know, they have concerts all, all summer long. And, and, and so it becomes a serious revenue generator. And so the hope is long-term, this will continue to be a, a drive to the property, to Deerfield. Mm -hmm. and uh, increase tourism in, in the area. And so once that happens, there, there's the, the justification for, for building the port, permanent toilet rooms. Okay. And I, I do also agree that, uh, you know, long-term, I'm sure that Treehouse agrees um, that fixed installed mm -hmm. is better. Um, my question in the current, um, in the current uh, slide, mm -hmm. um, People, you do very good about limiting the amount of alcohol that's consumed by any one patron, which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why you've been such a good neighbor. Um, Bloody Brook goes through the property, I believe. Mm -hmm. And in the lawn, you know, you've done some expanding of the setbacks, and that's great. During concerts, um, do you in, intend to put barriers to keep people from like wandering into the brook? Uh, you know, uh, it's a, not a huge concern, but the the walkway, you know, if if, if you could sure. restrict that, that would be something that would probably be a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think that it's it's a pretty large perimeter along mm -hmm. the brook, so it might be difficult to install a, a barrier, if you will. But I think that staff will be patrolling the area. Yeah, yeah and and to the extent that folks are adhering to the the, the maximum drink requirements, yeah, we we'd hope that people would. not you know, be in a state where they would be wandering into the brook. And the actual patio bar um, concession, um, is that going to be physically improved? Is it going to be, yep. a, or it'll be a temporary, temporary. thing? Yeah, it's temporary. Yeah, right. Right now. Yep. Are you, um, what, what would the limits be for, like right now, I think it's three, three, it's two, oh, isn't two, it? two, two, depending. It's two, it was... two to three, depending on how busy. Right. Okay. Same for the concert, you think, or is it going to be different than that? We haven't contemplated any change at this time. Okay. Um, if we have a great, you know, festival that lasts longer, or if we have right. packed in the day and there's two hours in between and there's some, it, it, the business is going to dictate that. Right. But what we can absolutely commit is responsible alcohol service is yep. paramount um, to Treehouse. And there is no <clears throat> show or one event that would ever, ever jeopardize that. So right. it, it is core to what we do. And we've committed that to every municipality we've been in and most of all to our guests and our staff. Thank you. Yeah, we're not, I'm not worried about that. Yeah, one final thing about port, uh, the, the facilities for, you know, uh, porta potties, et cetera. Will the interior of the building still be open so yes. people could access the existing in, okay. Yes, so that's a supplementary thing. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there will also be accessible uh, temporary toilet rooms as well. Um, one second, Bob. I got you. One second. Um, so I think there's a lot of info here, mm -hmm. and because we have full time jobs too, I still need to kind of consume this a little bit. But I do want to take some uh, public comment, and we may continue this. But uh, Bob, you wanted to make a comment. Come on up to the mic and that mic's on, right? Yes. Okay. Alex also had his hand up white. Oh, okay. I believe Lori may want to speak to you as well. For sure. Yeah. Welcome. You want to pull the mic down to you so everyone online can hear you? Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Lean in. Lean in. Eat the microphone. <laughs> Lean in. Mr. Chairman, I have uh, a lot of questions. A uh, lot to do with public safety. 
um, basically the application, the way I understand it, uh, you can have roughly uh, uh, 3,000 people there on any given hour of the hour that it's open. You got two, two licenses, one with 1,500, another one with 14 something or what have you, but they come out to about 3,000. And I don't know if that covers anything inside also. And uh, so, so I have a question on that. The other thing is, um, in the course of a day, right? I don't know how many times the, the entertainment is on, if it's on in two or three different sets and you somebody comes in and there's a show for two or three hours, then there's another one later and another one. Could you have uh, 5,000 people there in a given day? And uh, I think that's, that's an awful lot of people. And I want to talk about the parking a little bit. Um, how many parking spaces are going to be provided for uh, the patrons? I mean, if you've got 1,500 uh, people, if the general regulations, I'm not sure about the tourism district because I don't have a copy in front of me, but I think under the general regulations, you need two parking spaces per, I mean, for every two people, you need a parking space mm -hmm. plus one for every employee. I could be wrong because I'm not up to date on exactly what the current thing is. So I'm concerned about that. Uh, I'm concerned about the noise, obviously. The other big problem I get from people in town that tell me that they can't buy a ticket to get in and they're upset about that. Uh, the tickets get, I think they get sold online and what have you. And a lot of people aren't comfortable with a computer and, and what have you, and you know, the no availability. So the people aren't happy about that. Uh, I would think that if uh, a certain number of tickets should be reserved for uh, town residents, and if they haven't picked them up or bought them a, a day before the concert, then you could sell them out. But I mean, there should be a packet of tickets. So the people in town want to come get a chance to buy one. I haven't been one there and I haven't tried to buy one. Okay, nor do I want one for nothing. Uh, have you leased the parking spaces from Yankee Candle? Uh, the property on State Road, I think, uh, is owned by a uh, company, not by Yankee Candle. And if I read the newspaper correct, Yankee Candle's closing down their headquarters at some point in time. So I don't know who, whether you've got a lease for those parking spaces during the concert, you just have an informal understanding. But uh, I think that uh, you should have some sort of a formal lease on it or, or what have you, because they're going to issue you an occupancy permit increase and you don't have the space to justify it. Uh, now, the other thing you could think about is busing. Um, if you uh, were to contact uh, the Regional Transit Authority, maybe they could... Uh, arranged to transport people from certain strategic satellite locations to and from, which would cut down on the foot traffic. Because you're gonna have you may have foot traffic going across from Yankee Candle going across the street to, to uh, your location. Uh, I don't know that uh, they'll do it, but you you should ask them because uh, I think that uh, especially if you do anything while the university's in session, you might want to set up something where the kids come and get on the get on the bus in Amherst and come over, and then we don't have that many people that are above the three limit going back and forth home. So, uh, ten concerts a year is, is probably reasonable, but from what I understand, listening to you talk, uh, this is just a phase one of a multi-step phase operation. Am I correct? If you'd so, like to, yeah, so it, I'd like to go through all the points collectively if I could. If, you, if you're welcome to, sure. Is, that, is, that, is Mr. Decker? One comment. Sure. sure. I, we get about 2 million um, tourists a year at Yankee Candle, which is 363 days a year. There's about 5,000 a day, Bob. So mm -hmm. just to put 50, it in perspective. But you got the 5,000 a day, but how, how many of them had their two? Two cocktail limit or the three cocktail limit, and decided to drive. I know, drive that, but I'm just saying. Okay, just to I'm, give you I'm not trying to be unreasonable, mm -hmm. and I just want to make sure that you think this thing through, and you're going to we grant are. them a permit, and 
you want the toilets built right. They want the if they're going to spend the money to put the toilets in, they want to be able to have the capacity higher than what they're asking for now. Mm -hmm. I, if I understood it, listening to the gentleman, yeah, makes and, sense. Uh, I I think that you know it's an awful lot of people, and if you if they come, if there's three waves that day. Uh, any given time, you could have five, six, seven thousand people in there in a whole day, and coming and going. And yeah, I hope so. but if you got if you do the bus and and what have you, you could uh, tie it up somewhere. So, or you could just phase this thing in, and instead of giving them fifteen hundred now, you could turn around and, and double what they already have, or a fifty percent increase, and then it works out well, and you could gradually build it up. So I, I'm not I, I think we're going to work well, with we, some Bob. We got, yeah. I'm, I'm just telling we got you that, that I have some concerns that all of a sudden uh, somebody's you're going to have five thousand people in a in a day. Okay, and we don't have the staff in town to handle that. I don't think. All right, so. thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Then, so welcome to respond. Not yeah. a back and forth. Yeah, so just the you're, you're done, Bob. You're done. Right. Okay, yeah, thank you. Well, I, I always thank uh, Mr. Decker for his comments. Um, I recall our times with the ZBA, and he yep. always provided uh, very insightful comments. So I, I thank him for his questions. Yep. So I, I made a list here, and forgive me if I've missed any of them. Yep. So I think Mr. Decker's first question was whether or not the two permits would allow for up to 3,000. That is not correct. Uh, the permits, the way Massachusetts law is written, requires us to apply for the occupancy and then a, a, a second amendment pursuant to 19 age that allows for the distilled spirits wine and beer so that's why there's the two numbers i was yep. explaining with the breakdown before uh, with respect to his question related to multiple ticketed events in a day that's likely not going to be the case there might be an off chance that there might be something early in the morning that and then something in the evening uh, but those would not be uh concerts that would be another type of special event right yeah. Um, there would be a clean break between the events. Um, second, we had talked about the parking spaces. So uh, there's 282 spaces on the lot, but there's the two auxiliary lots. Um, as provided in the event plan, Trias is proposing to use a shuttle service that will transport patrons from the auxiliary lot to the facility. Um, but I think it's a wonderful idea to think about PVTA and, mm -hmm. and using that as a resource. It is in our traffic study or traffic memorandum, there's a reference to it being right on Route 5. So to the extent right. that folks want to use public transportation, it seems that that would be um, reasonable as well. But ultimately, Trieste is not relying on that. They're going to have their own private shuttle service. A uh, question related to noise. As I said before, when we sought the entertainment permit uh, previously, the same type of technology was proposed and it's provided in the event plan again. Um, very unfortunate that folks have not been able to buy a ticket in town. Uh, fortunately, by increasing the occupancy of 1500, maybe people can't buy tickets in the town. Um, uh, there is no, um, so in terms of the question related to is what's the agreement with Yankee Candle? There's currently an MOU between the parties allowing for the use of these parking lots. Uh, we talked about um, the, the bus, the shuttle service, PVTA. The comment regarding UMass students, uh, that's generally not the clientele that Treehouse wants to bring to the facility. They're not looking to be the last stop for UMass students. I say that as a former UMass, as a UMass alum. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> they're coming in. I love it. Um, and, and to his, uh, Mr. Decker's last question, uh, it seems like this is the first step. This is the first step. And I think that um, there's going to be lots of opportunities for us to continue to collaborate and find ways to grow the tourism in the town. And so ultimately, this is going to be a, sl a slower process, but we're going to work with the town and perfect it to the best that we can. And I think as provided in the event plan, to the extent that in the future we are able to provide bigger events, uh, Trias has already reached out to UMass and Greenfield. Yes, mm -hmm. Greenfield Community College to have additional auxiliary lots there as well. Okay. Um, so th there's aspirations for bigger and grander things, um, but right now we're we're seeking the 1500 increase to see how this goes and right. see, have you know we got to walk before we can run. Sure. And uh, to that to that point, um, uh, this given the auxiliary lots and the current staff, this is what Trias is able to do this summer, and hopefully greater things will be possible in the future. And okay. in addition to walk before we can run to prevent people from walking to the auxiliary lots, that's why we have chartered these buses, yeah. but also we will have police details they can't um, walk to out ensure right that people aren't crossing Route yes. 5. Perfect. Or parking on Route 5. Or parking right. on Route 5 as well, yes. Good. 
Uh, Alex, do you have your hand up? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask real quickly in, in regards to um, the the portalettes. Um, are they going to be like hand washing facilities? Um, that's also going to be furbished with like soap and running water um, as well, and you know paper towel. So, so, uh, so through the chair, there will be uh, hand washing facilities, but there won't be running water. It's okay. it's temporary um, toilet facilities. Yep. So it it says, um, Alex, hand washing stations will be provided with a ratio of one to ten. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. And hand sanitizer, I think, in yeah. the yeah. In, in the, the units. 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 Yeah. Oh, sure. I, yeah. Any other public comment? Welcome. Hi, Lori Busada, 193 North Main Street. I live on the other side of the tracks. <laughs> I'm uh, so excited to have you in town. I think you've done a gorgeous job with the interior of the space, and I love that you've maintained the trails. I cross-country skied there a couple times this winter. My, um, I'm so glad that you talked about parking because I do not want to turn that north field into a... Um, parking lot. So I'm glad that you addressed that. My other major concern is energy use. Um, I loved reading your rationale for moving here on your website that you value the outdoors. And we are at the so many beautiful things around here in the entrance to the Berkshires. I would love to see your lighting especially convey that message. I'm very distressed that the patio lighting seems to be on every hour of the day. I stopped by on a very cold afternoon and the light was lighting was on, seems quite bright. I don't know if it's LED or not, but I was told that it's on even though when the temperature is very cold because you also have propane heaters. I find it extremely um, inappropriate in this time when our climate is in absolute crisis and the whole planet needs to reduce our emissions by 50% by 2030. So I take that very personally and I know our town has worked very hard to look at how we can reduce emissions. We have LED street lights, which has been a huge energy saver. Um, and we're looking at renovating different things in our buildings. So I would really like to see solar lights on the patio. Um, I would like to see the parking lot lights LED, I think there's one right now, but I think the other two are extremely bright and really kind of ruins the atmosphere in my backyard. I don't want to feel like I'm next to an airport, but that's the atmosphere. So I hope that because of your success and your ability to draw lots of people here, that you can also take that opportunity to put out the message that we can have a great time and take care of our planet. Um, I would like you to also consider composting toilets. There's a lot of really good models out there that are not offensive and nice looking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Thank you. So assuming, um, to address your parking, assuming that two people arrive in each car, mm -hmm. you can accommodate about a third of the people that would come to a 15, 1500 uh, person, maybe there'll even be three people, but the way I calculate is you could put about 570 people um, in, you know, if there are two two persons for, per car in, in your own lot, is that roughly what you've determined? Or how do you calculate the number of cars that will come to a concert? So, so through the chair, uh, the traffic study or memorandum rather, has a breakdown uh, based on empirical data from the previous concert and also other concerts in the area. There's one at Northampton where they seem to have 3.78 people per car, which we're not proposing. Uh, Treehouse is proposing two uh, attendees per car, mm -hmm. which is according to the traffic, traffic engineer, very conservative, but we'd rather be conservative starting mm -hmm. out than right. overly ambitious, right? And so, uh, it's our understanding, and I don't have the specific numbers in terms of the people, but it would be 282 times two. I was getting 564, 570. That's what I got to, yeah. yeah. Um, so that would be the number of patrons that could be served on in the parking lot itself. 
um, the preference would always be to have them on site, you know, if, if, if needed. So if it's a smaller concert, only attracts 500 people, we can ac accommodate everyone on site, mm -hmm. um, including staff, because uh, there's also some parking areas along, along the grass as well. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, the plan is for the retail Yankee Candle site to be the main auxiliary lot, and then staff, to the extent needed, could park in the corporate lot. Okay. All right. It says approximately 800 vehicles total. So initially, at least, you're covered for parking mm -hmm. on the, this calculation. Between the, all the three lots? Yeah, yeah, all three lots. Okay. I think we have on one of the slides, I don't want you to bring it back up, but we have the breakdown of the number of yep. spaces. Yeah. Hold on. Yep. It's also in the event plan. I actually have so oh, you I you mentioned that um you know Amy Mann is currently limited to 500 and at what point would you need to know an answer to this question before you could raise the the number of people who might attend that show that that seems to me the one that might be the most in demand but I could be wrong um when would you be able to to spin around I don't know how much once we approve this you know if we approve it you know, what's the timeline between our approval and you getting all the legal things done that you need to get done? So, so Trias is, I mean, Sarah can jump in if I'm, if I'm misconstruing this, but it, it's my understanding that they're actively discussing this with the artists and saying, if we're able to get this increase, could, could we make these shows happen? So it's not mm -hmm. just existing artists, it's other acts. Right. Yeah. And so where Trias is in terms of the scheduling, we're really close to concert season. Right. So uh, there's probably some acts that trios can't get because, you know, we're, we're, we're having to seek a, an increase in occupancy. And so, um, but ultimately, there's a lot of great acts that are coming between Boston and New York that would love to come to Deerfield. And so I think there's a list of, I think, 15 or so. We can't disclose mm -hmm. the 15, right. but there's there's 15 acts that are in discussions and that would pull the trigger, presumably, if we have the increase. So um, now that being said, we're proposing. 10 concerts, um, approximately 10 concerts, because mm -hmm. if there's 11, you know, we, right. we don't, you know, yeah. Um, but uh, ultimately, um, there's a lot of acts that that do want to come to the mm -hmm. industry of so and if not this year, maybe next year. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And um, the other, just to revisit Mr. Decker's um, not, I think it's an actually a clever idea um, is is there a way that you you work with Eventbrite to sell your tickets at the moment? Yeah. Is there a way that uh, you know you could have a certain number of tickets that are arranged and the first hour is for Deerfield residents and then it it opens up and if they don't buy the tickets in the first hour they're gone. I mean it's something to think about. I don't expect an answer tonight, but um, Dean and Damian maybe they can understand why Deerfield residents would like to be able to enjoy these things, sure. um, particularly the ones that are on North Main Street who abut your property and will be a beneficiary of uh, the, the sound. Yeah. So I, I would just say that with the increase of 1500, there's a lot more likelihood that folks right. in town are going to be able to acquire tickets. Right. Um, I, I've looked at shows and I've, I've missed out on tickets and I'm yeah. the attorney for Treehouse. So yeah, exactly. there's, there's no special treatment for me. So I, I will not be walking into the show tonight. You know, no, Mark yeah. has a ticket. <laughs> is this a comedy show tonight or is it an actual concert? It's a concert. It's the tallest man on earth, which is a oh, very okay. prominent uh, yeah. folk singer. Yeah. Okay. Nice. In international. Oh yeah. yeah. He's from Sweden. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. That's in the little, yeah. uh, the, the 200 seat arena. Correct. Yeah. Nice. That's a yeah. nice spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be an intimate concert. So looking forward to that and looking forward to a lot of other concerts. Um, I attended the Jeff Tweedy concert in Charlton. It was really magical. So, right. um, you know, th those are the types of experiences that that Deerfield can look forward to. Yeah. Any other comments from the public? Um, as I said, I think I, you know, I. I would like to take a little time because we a lot of times don't have a chance to go through everything completely and I really appreciate all the input you've put in and um, I wanted to you know consume the the comments that we've had from the different boards and the police and the fire. Um, I would recommend just continuing this for a very short time i'm not sure how fast we would need to. When, I don't know when the next meeting we could hold this uh, vote at it doesn't need I don't. Again, we were going to talk with our attorneys to make sure that we've got the right language for our decision. Um, 
I, I, we don't need a ton of time, but I don't know how much time they'll need. So if I may, um, please. we are disappointed to know that there would be any continuation, <laughs> but as Mark had mentioned, we do have acts that we're uh, contingent on uh, sure. getting this, and we just want to make sure we don't miss that window or release Understood. more tickets for shows that we already have. Yep. So, thank yep. you. I, I know the urgency for sure. I just have to definitely do due diligence, but I... Um, so based on my know. review of the comments, uh, particularly the public safety comments, um, I did have Chris Nolan forward this information to council um, in the event that they had suggestions in terms of conditions. So you do have to do a date and time certain, certain for a continuance. Mm -hmm. um, I believe... Are we board. meeting on Friday? I don't know if we can get it by Friday. Um, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. We have a meeting with finance next Wednesday, right? I believe so. Let me check real quick. Okay. We have. I thought we were meeting on Friday. We have a meeting next Friday. There's a meeting next we have Friday. We the 14th for a hearing. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, um, I'm, I'm sorry. It is at, Four o'clock. So Wednesday would be closer. Wednesday is closer, but it is there is a fine. It's so it's a joint meeting of finance and the select board, and frankly, right. those conversations get pretty in depth. So what about Tuesday? Yeah. Uh, hold on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just need a couple days for the. Yeah. Later, okay. Not a long time. Not talking Potentially, we could do Tuesday, but I would need to check the calendar. Give me two seconds. Okay. okay. We'll give you um, some time on that. So yeah, the finance committee is posted for next Tuesday. Um, and I haven't posted for the select board yet, but that oh, will definitely get done tomorrow. What time, what time are they posted it, what for? What time are they posted? They're posted for five months. So if the select five board probably do five. They're posted 5.30. I'm sorry, you broke up there a second. Sorry. Um, yeah, the finance committee is posted for 5.30 this coming Tuesday. So, so we could April eleven. So we we could post for five, right? Oh wait, hold on. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong Tuesday. Uh, one second. Uh, April eleventh. Ahead of myself here. So the the finance committee is posted for Wednesday, not Tuesday. I misspoke. Right. right. So is Wednesday, is Tuesday open? Tuesday is open. Um, yes. That way, it's not a full. We had that as a CCI backup, but I know I believe it's, CCI now is the 13th and the 27th, right? Okay, that's correct. so yeah, potentially we could do this on the 11th. Um, so did you get in contact with Lisa? Would she? I did send it to Lisa. I she's reviewing it. So what I would do um, is have her turn that around so that we have some time maybe okay. by Monday. So we have some time, at least a little bit of time to look at it. But I think if there has to be conditions to protect the town, that's probably the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. I think the consensus is that we are supportive of this activity. And I have to say that I really do have problems with porta potties, but mm -hmm. I am willing to, and I understand what the situation and, uh, and the commitment of funds to get that you know, a permanent um, facility, but so. Yeah, and I would just say that um, you're going to come to us for an expansion and assuming that this experiment works this year, you're going to want to increase the numbers. And at that point, we're going to need a commitment that you're going to build the facilities that are hardwired and plumbed. Um, so just so you know, if you come back to us next year looking for a larger, that that's one thing I would I would insist on seeing. Uh, because by then you'll you'll know that you can make a profit, and it, you're gonna it's gonna make sense. If, if I may, um, we appreciate that candid uh, feedback, um, and I, I will tell you that I have looked at the plans that were proposed. I I can assure you that we they did evaluate the the actual physical sure. structure. Um, and that will be evaluated further. Maybe there's a way to make it more energy efficient um, right. and uh, greener. Mm -hmm. um, and that will 
overall improve the project. Um, I, I would say that um, uh, we're seeking this modification here to test, to, to test, but also yeah. it's it's to allow us to scale up to that level, right? right? So right. the understanding is we're not going to be at fifteen hundred right away, right? Uh, and there might also be an opportunity um, in the not so distant future where it's not going to be a 10 concert event, it might be a bigger event, right? And it might be a one time event, right? Yep. And so uh, I just want to kind of explain that we're going to require flex, we're going to request for flexibility from the select board as as Trias approaches this. And so mm -hmm. th I'm thinking there's one event in mind that that Trias is contemplating that would be larger than 1500 in the before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, we're not, you know, it's not set in stone right now. We need to walk before we can run first. Mm -hmm. And so right. that's what we want to show the select board that, that we can do this, this major event. So I just want to manage the expectations of the select board as well. Yeah. Be, be, be as, as candid as possible. I was actually so, yeah. talking about next year. So, you know, if, you know, assuming town council agrees with it, this is a good thing to move forward on and has some conditions that you're satisfied with. I was thinking about the, the next iteration when you have Pace. a better, a better, well-developed you know, <laughs> plan based on your real experiences here, that you know we would have a serious discussion about knowing when this development would take place. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it would have to be done before you did something next year, but that would be our flexibility. But we we want to understand that at some point it's going to be it's going to be no porta potties. Right, we're choosing the path. Because, yeah. or because everyone's successful and it's really, right. it makes it's sense. a really great system. I, I will say yeah. that the cost for the temporary uh, toilet rooms is, is astronomical. So yeah, oh, it's, it's everyone's everyone's yeah, benefit exactly. to make it permanent as well. Uh, it's just the initial cost of- It's the cash business, that porta potty business. So it's, yeah. it's pretty surprising. <laughs> yeah. I, I had no idea. Yeah, so- um, remodel bathroom in your house you'll you'll get a you'll get a clue <laughs> i'm off to be there soon I'm not ready. we just did it it's rough <laughs> so um, would the 11th work for you i mean is that five days that. something like that six days okay that Great. works i know we want to be a, okay i just sent lisa an email so. thank you and, and to the extent that you think it's appropriate i'm happy to have conversations yep. with her directly to hash we'd appreciate out that. any discussions yep. that need and if, I, that if, if we hold that point out Facilitate that. that will facilitate faster action. What time do you think the meeting should start? I, Six o'clock. Lisa knows that we are supportive of this, so it's it's and, really just to and, make and sure I've, that we're being careful. And mm -hmm. I've worked with town council before, so uh, it, I'm sure it will go very smoothly. Yeah. So um, the only other the thing that um, on my phone for some reason my phone wasn't working today. Um, I I never got it um, back from Bob. Walden, our um, commission, our board, uh, building commissioner, as as far as um, if there was a severe weather, mm -hmm. I I think you have enough space to handle that. Mm -hmm. Both the warehouse and, and the uh, space. you know That's occupancy that. total. That was my only concern. I mean, maybe Kurt knows about that. Um, you know, if the, you're going to speak, Kurt, come up to the microphone. We were just if you had to move everybody inside in a protected space. I just wanted to make sure we had like capacity for 1500. I believe there is, if you included the warehouse. We've started the combination, the conversation with Bob about okay. moving a folks inside that warehouse space right now, to the best of my knowledge, that is not, uh, does not have an occupancy limit set to it for a public space. Okay. So Bob would have to work the figures and see what could fit exits etc as to what it can hold for people but okay. we don't foresee a problem with it it's yes just right. I, I didn't numbers. think so but i yeah. i I, sure. I wasn't able to get in touch with him yeah. you know conversation wise i just that was the only thing i had from a public safety point of view oh. for myself sure you know. and if, if i may also i think part of the discussion was that there would be uh, a fire watch on site yeah. as well so yes. that kind of it, adds it to the concern that. and 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 of course the rems is right here and stuff but the idea is if you know all of a sudden you had a tornado watch yeah no of course thunderstorm or whatever you have to move people inside when there's ample warehouse space yeah stuff. And, yep. and if people's cars are in satellite mm -hmm. parking lots you're gonna have some kind difficult. of you know, yeah holding area so that's i just wanted to make sure there was occupancy space for them okay um, if i may just one other point sure. uh, uh we also wanted to have discussion regarding the hours of of service um, yes 
And I, I apologize again. Allison did send me the email on um, March 21st and um, it went to my junk file. No problem. So if you that hadn't happens. sent me another email and then I was sitting there and watching it come into the junk file, I probably so, wouldn't have seen Do you it. want to just clarify what you're what you're asking? So so given that there's going to be these um, concerts, um, there will be in the evenings, the request would be that to increase the um, hours until 11 p.m. Okay. And then uh, and also in the morning for potential morning events would be uh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Just that way we don't have to come before you every time we want to have a yeah. yes, small event right. there was in the like morning. A Mm -hmm. like the soccer, soccer game or something exactly yeah. exactly if, if yeah. we uh you know have a an early morning baseball game or yeah. something if I'm... i i i we have had no complaints um through the whole year that you've been in operation and um so i have no problem with extended hours you've been very responsible and i so i feel like it's not a problem it's a quick question about that so you're looking at the evening hour extension to accommodate your concerts, but it's not like Monday through Thursday, if there's no concert event that you're necessarily going to be open until 11. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's as business dates, right, right. but uh, as of now, I mean, we generally close. It's just to avoid the people yeah, right. of coming before us. It, it, right. Mm -hmm. it, it, I, it, I absolutely, you know, poor Casey has enough to do with them. <laughs> it, it, if I may, just I recall this coming up at the last meeting. Has Deerfield adopted the brunch hours on Sundays? The you know, serve before ten. Places that are already open. Yeah, yeah. let so, me check because I can't remember. So if we did. It may have happened between when I was here before and when I came back. So we would make that request as part of the um, application as well to increase the hours accordingly. And to the extent that the brunch hours exist, right. we right. ask for ten a.m. on Sundays. If the town hasn't adopted it, we would just we'd be stuck with the yeah. the noon. But it'd be preferable to have the 10. So that's something else Lisa can yep. opine on. Okay. So yeah. um, any other discussion before we finish up here? Everything good? Um, so I'll make a motion to continue the hearing until 5.30 p.m. on April 11th. Uh, I think we're going to do 5. 5.30? 530. 530. 530. 530. Oh, 530. Five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty. On Tuesday the eleventh. Yeah. Is oh, that all right? Okay. Tuesday the eleventh. It's a standalone meeting. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'll, second, I'll second the motion. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? No, no. no. All Thanks. those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. No, I'm right. sorry. I was just getting my dates mixed up. No, nope, that's all right. Too many I was this is the full time job in case you're under. I hear you. Yeah. Great. So. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you appreciate coming your time. in. I appreciate the yeah. opportunity to yeah. yeah. tell us where you're going and what your plans are. It's always, yeah. we're always curious. Like, and hey, we're, we're like, starting with light reading. Yes, right. Yeah. Well, just we it, very it that. Yeah, we, really we wanted to it. show you that the Trias is being very thoughtful about yeah. it. Like, yes. yes, we love that. Thank yep. you so much. Really happy really here. Of... Hey, enjoy the show tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. yeah. He's got it. Too. Right, exactly. Drive safely. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, I, so I guess let's, let's go through the um, the agenda. We've got a um, next item is a board of health health agent discussion. Anything you want to hit on, Alex? If you're still there, uh, is he not still there? No, he's not still there. Anything you want to hit on? I just I just want to say that um, COVID is still circulating, even though. We're in green. It still is circular. I did have a discussion with Eric Meals at the water at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, he he wants you to come down there when he's testing. He tests just like he sends out all the others. Fills the bottle, puts it in the fridge, boxes it up, sends it out. So right from the yep, company? right from. Okay. So so he said sometimes they'll have no detection at all the fecal matter is in there everything's in there no detection of covid the next time you'll have detection of covid so you know it's just been like this it, it is it's like that so he's he wants you to come down see it if you have any concerns of how they do it they take it right from the inflow where all the other testing for all, right. all the other stuff is happening boxes it up well it goes in the fridge overnight then boxes it sends it on so we'll see um, okay, we'll see, so hopefully more reporting will be more consistent. Any, Thank you, Trevor. Yep, you're welcome. Um, 
I guess just while we're talking about that, the sewer, um, I, we had our monthly meeting this this afternoon. Um, we are on track. I wanted to talk to you, at, and I don't have it yet. So we were emailed a change order, which is change order 10. Change order 10 would encompass. Um, can Bob, we'll wait. Bob, Bob, can you talk outside a little bit? Thank you. No, you don't need to leave. You just need to not talk, compete with us. Come on, you can stay. You can stay. Yes, please. You need to repeat what you just said. Yes, I would love to have the regional uh, transportation authority bring uh, send a letter in support of replacing the dry bridge at the north end of Main Street. There's a lot of detouring. Yes, that'd It'll be, be that'd be wonderful if you could. We can't hear you, Bob. <laughs> I, heard I heard you. you. The public they did not. That's why I'm repeating everything meeting. you're saying. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Bob. Appreciate you coming Hi, in, Bob. Thank you, Bob. You know, I always appreciate your comments. Come on. So. Okay, so our um, so at the sewer meeting today, we talked about uh, you know update on the plant. Um, everything seems to be moving in in place. You know, we had um, completion dates. Um, the the chain with change order seven. The completion date will be December fifteenth, twenty twenty three. Um, for for uh, substantial completion, the final completion will be. Um, January 14th, 2024, oh, man. providing we get, and, and this will get extended again if we do change order 10, but what we're doing, the, the most of the majority of the project is done. We're probably 96% done with the phase one of the project. So that's within the 19 million? Yes, okay. in, in the first phase. And then, uh, and then um, the... Change order seven was all the work they're working on right now, um, which is that first aeration tank work. Change order 10 would be finishing out the project um, and using up the grant money and uh, the, the 22 million that we appropriated for the project, still leaving about 300,000 right now in contingency. So for change order um, 10, uh, that would that would be doing ladders down the clarifier, uh, the secondary clarifier to access the lot the lot um, launders. Then there's uh, the operation building roof. That's the roof of the main old plant. So doing a new roof, we've got leaks coming in, and so the, the plan was to redo the roof on that, uh, which is a flat roof. Um, a gate for the entrance. Um, the north aeration tank, which is the bulk of all the work, which is the new the mixers and all the work in the post and all the cement work and rebar and all the things that need to happen for that north aeration tank. Right now, they're working on the south aeration tanks. Um, some headworks potable water in case anything happened, we'd have uh, water to the headworks building, and then uh, polymer injection points, which is where they would stick in polymer. That's how they treat the water. There's different injection points in the line that they want to put in um, a flagpole, believe it or not. Um, so, and then uh, site grade grading and the paving. So they're, they're finishing off the grading on the site uh, back to what it was with the farmer and then dealing with the whole area in the front um, and really finishing off the, off the project, which is about um, 2 million, 376, thousand eight hundred fifty six fifty seven dollars and fifty three cents two million what two million seven two two million three seventy six oh it's two million three okay. yeah and that still leaves three hundred thousand in contingency um what we would do um that would get us everything that we wanted to do when we started this project it finishes it out it's the one thing you were thinking like i wanted to finish it out finishes it out the okay. issue is um talking with waterline today he said if you can give us you don't have to give us approval right now but if you we'd like it but not tonight because we you need time to study it and look at it all but he said if you're if you're at all leaning that way 
because of lead times and everything, he really wanted to get the rebar and stuff, the, the design done. So if, if we can get a general consensus that we would probably move this way, at worst, it would cost him 1500 bucks if we decide to not move forward with this project. I think we should move forward with it, but he really wanted to get an email so he could get those plans out and get the rebar stuff going and the, the it's really design work. On that. I, I just need to understand Please. what we're talking about. So yep. are we talking about the two million three to do this next phase? Or are we talking about 300,000 to do this next phase? No, uh, we're talking two million three hundred dollars. And this is money we already currently have. Yes, it's the money that we've already uh, appropriated for the project. Right. When we went back, so we initially did 19, then we went back right, to the and, right. residents for the and, additional and, money. And this, and we did one phase of that with USDA. Right. This is that last bit that we held we, we off. We were hesitant because we didn't know what the price increases were be were on. Right, and the, and total. and that's that's approved borrowing. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. And, and and so we're coming under budget. You want to speak? Please yes, speak? please. So. Before you, I, I would respectfully request the board put the decision off for at least a week because we're still putting together the borrowing documents. And that was not, we didn't, Brenda and I have been doing that work. We would like to speak to you directly. Yeah, that's fine. Because we have to coordinate all this information together. Right. And in order for us to get all the bonding documents together, we have to know what was discussed today. And we got an email from Justin. Yep. We didn't actually have a financial meeting after your Correct. one o'clock. Correct, we normally do. Yep. So we didn't today. This is an element that I would like to have a, a more in-depth conversation between exactly. the three of us so that right. we can better, un staff can understand what the expectations are from us. And so that's what I, I, we did not want to vote this tonight. Right. I just wanted to discuss it. And if we are leaning that way, he could get started on some of that stuff because of the lead times right. are so long. Right. Sorry. I yeah, that's okay. No, I, I, was, I was just trying to clarify. We so should we, vote it tonight. We have authority to borrow an additional yes. 300, 3 million? 3 million. Right. So my only thought would be- um, 2 million. Yeah, two million three, and then there's a leftover three hundred thousand. That's correct, right. right? And that would be the full borrowing that we have authorized. That's correct. So, a couple of questions, and I agree we should wait. Yep. Um, and hear from Brenda. Is there any possibility we could hear from you and Brenda on Tuesday? Potentially, um, I can't guarantee it though, because yeah. I actually am going to be in Boston Tuesday and Wednesday, so I would need to coordinate Probably with not, Brenda. Then. Yeah. And see if she can report back to you so, either on Tuesday or perhaps Wednesday at the finance. And we're yeah. going to post for you for Wednesday, just in case. Yeah. And and is there a Friday finance as well? There's a Friday meeting for on the 14th, 14th. for the yeah. capital. 14th, we have to have a capital hearing. You guys mm -hmm. have to go through the hearing process yeah. that's required in the bylaw. Right. Right. Certainly, yeah. if, if we need to wait until Friday the 14th, we can do that. Yeah, I was just trying to figure yeah. out, you know, the giving you all the leeway you need to, right. to know what you need to know. Right. Um, yeah. no so maybe question. Friday is a better one. And Friday the 14th. So this is just a question for, for Justin and or yeah. uh, David. You know, the, the flat roof, is there any thought about getting trusses and making it not flat? Does, does a not flat roof last longer? And also, we got another 300,000. Is there any any thought of putting solar, solar panels on anything there? There's a lot of roof space. So um, it, those are good questions. So we were hanging on to that contingency, and we pulled some projects like uh, WAS pumps out of this change What is order. a WAS pump? Yeah, was there RAS testing you. There are RAS pumps and WAS pumps. WAS kind of takes the pumps after the effect, and it really just depends on where you're going to pump the water. Do they make raspberry noises? No. Like <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I'm just kidding. I want to give Eric Meals credit because, you know, these pumps were in the plan, and Eric said, look, I don't need to spend that money. It was like $300,000. He said, we don't need to spend that money, save that money, put it into doing a roof instead of putting it into the pumps because I can pump with a RAS pump and not a WAS pump. Mm -hmm. So he said just, you know, so he was really looking over the engineering and trying to find ways that he can get what he needs to done, done a roof um, right. versus that. They think the the what's on there is like the stone, the old stone flat roof. They feel like the new rubber membrane is going to be fine and won't need trusses or anything like that, yeah. but it's worth asking. I think it would cost quite a bit more, but we could certainly ask. I mean, pre-made trusses, you know, mm -hmm. then you have quick installation. So what you lose in one price, you know, you gain in, in yep. the labor 
Um, I'm only asking the question, and it's and fine. I used to live in a building that had a rubber roof, and um, I'm sure the membranes are better now. Um, yeah, but you know, yep. If you get a leak in a membrane, then you got to bring in thermal scans and mm -hmm. figure out where the water is and where it's gone, and it affects your insulation, et cetera. But yep. As far as the three hundred thousand and the the was and the ras, yeah. Um, I would rather see. I would rather see so you know solar panels and then use the money that you save in electricity costs to get the RAS or the WAS pump. Yeah. If, if it can be installed later, right. if it has to be installed now. No, we won't need it at all. We've got redundancy and yeah. pump, so that won't be an issue. But there are, there will be other change orders on top right. of that to kind of use up that funding because we want to use all the grant money. Um, but yeah, so there will be discussions. I think that's a great great topic. And that's what I was hoping to bring back yeah. in another meeting to discuss. Yeah. Maybe we can get um, DPH here to talk about it as well. I just, the one thing that I wanted to bring it up today was when we were having the meeting, Josh from Waterline said, hey, I understand if if you can get some consensus that you'll do something here, really love to get these things in because of the lead time on it. And he said, you know, we would eat the 1500 bucks. That's a, the that's a most we'd be out if you all decide not to do anything here, but just wanted to get some incentive like we would go forward to get that stuff rolling. Then we can make a, a further I, decision on all of that stuff down the we, road. We put this stuff on hold to begin with. We just We weren't sure yeah. of being able to, to get, you know, come in under budget. Mm -hmm. They have been extremely good. Hundred thousand is what we're we're over right now. I know. I mean, thing. it's just amazing considering COVID situation. Yeah. You know, Post COVID. Yeah. I mean, consensus wise, I I don't yeah. think we we're not going to vote it tonight, yeah. but I think we're right. all in yeah. agreement that you know if they want to get some flip the coin and start working on it, and you know, fifteen hundreds at risk. Right. It's it's not know, a huge amount no. of money, right? No. I so. I mean, we want to finish it up. Yeah. So I can't see us not voting this then we may vote some of it not all but something like that well let's all. talk it out and then see what brenda says about the borrowing and all of that right. stuff so so okay. i'm just going to shoot her an email and remind her she yeah, and I, I, to I, I don't know i mean t as tim says i think we certainly would have consensus to finish. okay yeah and if 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 the uh grant is going to come through when we when we spend out the 19 million and it's not contingent on the other three million right. then then that's good right yeah i mean um well and, yeah we just wanted to make sure we were yeah no i understand i yeah. I, I think it's good and i um you know if you're talking about you know borrowing 2.3 million and there's another 300,000 left over and it could be used in something that's going to generate cool. power yeah then, makes sense then you know you're going to be saving every year and making your money back right and and that there are some new I, rules about municipalities and solar panels and you know we might actually get Right, thirty percent tax credit and or twenty six percent. I don't. I think in the uh, in what's the Inflation Reduction Act? I yes, think that has some some legislation that covers some of this. So, you know, if we were going to spend three hundred thousand, we might get back you know seventy five thousand. And that so, processing building is is perfectly yeah. pitched for and stout. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. and I, we. I, I really would like us to see solar panels. Yeah. Because We'll just yeah, see. we'll just see how, how it yeah. plays out. Yeah, okay, okay. good. Thanks. Yeah, so I'll, we'll have another meeting on yeah. this. I just want to see where you guys' thoughts are and yeah. just update everybody on what we did today. So everything's in, in really good shape there and it's coming out. We're, again, still waiting on that. We have no permanent power. That's right. the problem. We're waiting on that ATF, I think it's called, some sort of switch. And we can't... I can't believe Yeah, it. so it's supposed to be here mid-May. And if it's here mid-May... Three weeks or so after that, the work will have been done. Then, um, then Eversource can test it all. Then we can put everything to use and get moving. But mm -hmm. it's but we're just waiting for permanent power. Right. So that's where we're at. Yep. Okay. And uh, I assume that there's going to be some contingency to buy some of the most likely switches that are going to yeah. malfunction and have them as yeah, in spare reserve. parts. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Excellent. Thanks Sounds for the good. Uh, update. Sure. Okay. So, um, all right, let's hit all of our discussion items. So formation of a frontier regional energy planning task force. I haven't heard about this. What, what is this? Doing? I hadn't either. So I was hoping. Well, this is where MA and the energy committee, um, they wanted, they wanted to be part of the frontier capital, um, group. 
And, but, and part of that is to have long-term energy decisions be. Uh, it's been discussed with Darius at all. I mean, it's not our, we're not frontier, so. Right. right. And that was my question. Yeah. It, there needs to be some discussion. If that's an intentional thing, then there needs to be some discussion with them. Right. Well, the idea uh, is, you know, we needed, we needed to talk to see if there was interest from the other energy. Can, can I, um, can I pipe in here? I didn't realize oh, this was. Sure. Hi. So the idea is um, we, we had a meeting with representatives from Waitley Conway and Sunderland. And it's just, as you said, um, Carolyn, that we want to have a, um, some plan ahead of time so that we are not um, respond, you know, realizing too late that we could have gotten grants for different projects in the town. And we want to work with all the four towns together so that we can leverage more money through different grant sources. So we're just asking, um, all the towns are asking, uh, all the committee, energy committee members are asking their select boards to appoint this informal group to work with um, the Capital Improvements Committee and um, Bill Hildreth and Darius to research things and kind of get long range planning, like you said. So well, I think, so we'll take this under advisement, I think, and make a decision on it in a little bit after we have some discussion with Frontier. Well, okay, we haven't, um, so, um, yeah, we haven't proposed it to anybody at Frontier because we, we were seeing that the select boards would um, just have it be an, like an adjunct activity of our own energy committee meetings, kind of making it a, a, a regional energy committee. Well, yeah. th actually, there's a few things that, um, you know, we haven't as select boards gotten together. Correct. Well, and so, we don't even have a formal proposal. I'm sorry, Trevor. Well, so part, part that of, was my question. What's the formal intent? Right. And part of the issue is that we, we have select board and school committee representation on their capital planning committee already. So I, I just would want to talk with the administration about, are we interested in bringing in you know, additional people, additional people, or would, is it something that we would be uh, reaching out for specific advice when we were doing a project? So I, I just think I'm not against it. I just would want to talk, talk it through a little bit further before appointing a committee to, or a task force to be, you know, talking to Frontier. Trip, may I ask a question? Yes. Um, one thing I would suggest, Lori, mm -hmm. is Perhaps energy resources and the other representatives from the other towns that you all have talked to could put together a letter of request with an outline of the goals of this group, because it will make it clearer for all four towns. Oh, I did you get a letter from David Keith or, or not? I've been working on other things like getting the green communities close out done. We have town meeting ahead of us in three weeks, Lori. This may not be the best time to ask this question. No, sure. I thought Dave, I, I wasn't sure why it came up tonight. I thought David, um, David Gilbert Keith actually did send a letter. Actually, there, I think Chris can answer that question. There, yes, there was a letter from David included in the packet that was given yeah. to the board. Can I ask a couple of questions, Lori? Um, so, are you saying that the other towns select boards have already taken action on this? Or are you are you saying that you've talked to the other select boards? Or... Oh, not personally, but the representatives oh. of other town energy committees are right. making. So where where is it actually in process? I mean, so Waitley's energy committee talked to Waitley. Sunderland's talked to Sunderland. Right. Uh, do we know what the response was? Um, or no, or is this just everybody's doing this and nobody's had any feedback well, yet? Yeah, I don't think we've gotten feedback yet. I think we're all at the at this initial stage of, um, mm -hmm. we, we want it to be um, a little bit more formal, you know, to be recognized so that um, we can actually do some good work. Um, we have, so one thing that we've done so far is, um, Tim, you were at that meeting with Matt McTeague from Eversource and he, proposed um, a, a deep energy audit that could be um, conducted of a, a town building. And um, it would give us a lot of general information for long range planning. So that's one thing that we wanted to talk about with um, 
Bill Hildreth, that would be our first step to, so he could provide the information that he had. And then they would pay, I don't have the information right in front of me, um, for uh, Mass Save would pay for most of it. And then they would also help us with the, the planning on how to get there and help us with <clears> the <throat> Inflation Reduction Act and um, incentives and other local um, state incentives. So mm -hmm. the idea is to just kind of get a handle on the big picture and get all the four towns involved. So it's not not all having Deerfield come up with the plan and then have the other towns reject it because they weren't in on it from the beginning. Yeah, no, that that all sounds good. And I, I was just tr trying to clarify. So has anybody talked to Darius and Bill about the possibility that the four towns might do this? Or is this all without consulting them? Well, um, I know that M.A. and David did go to um, a school committee meeting um, about a month ago, maybe, and talk about the idea of um, more, more interaction with um, energy planning. Yeah. So I don't know that we specifically said that we um, want to get a group together to to help with this kind of thing, but we've been working with um, Bill Hildreth all along on um, different projects. Yeah, no, I know. I, I, I meant to be collaborative as a, you know, that's the yeah. idea. Obviously, you know, um, the more people who are looking for money from the federal government to fund local projects, the better. Right. Uh, just, you know, wanted to understand where in the process you are and if, if, if you don't have the answer, that's fine. But obviously, you know, you should come up with a deadline when you want this to be done um, so that, you know, you can actually start, you know, interacting with the schools and the capital committee. And so anyway, it sounds like, from my perspective, not a bad idea, but uh, obviously we want to have some time to consider it. So and I just reviewed that letter and it still doesn't really outline what the intent um, I hear the the energy conservation pieces, um, but what is the full intent of this advisory capacity? And really, has has there been full discussion with the administration? I think that's a good point that Trevor just brought up because it's going to impact the workload on the administration as well, Lori. So we really need feedback from them and the school committee because the representation from the towns is more formal in those two capacities school committee and the administration. Okay. Um, it's just, it's just, um, it's just hard to hear about things that um, the capital planning committee has gotten underway when, when the energy committee um, has access to information about, um, you know, we had a whole um, review done by Ben Wheel from UMass and, um, funding for different, you know, slightly different plans. So we're just seeking a way to um, be more closely involved in the planning and, and provide support and research and extra hands on deck kind of thing. So um, you wanna suggest that we talk to capital planning and Darius or what would the next set uh, stage be? What would you suggest? Uh I, I would like you to, I'm, and really <clears throat> to make this possible, I, I feel like you you are an energy committee already, right? And so um, th there is no capacity to like put you at the table at the capital planning committee um, to decide on the functions. If I think if I feel like if you have ideas on how the how the frontier could approach their energy differently, I think you could work on that and propose that you know, either through the capital planning committee or propose it to the administration. I'm not sure what the end, end goal is. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't actually, I don't actually see it the same way Trevor does. I think what your, what your intent, I, I think, is to have all four energy committees from all four towns learn about ideas that the capital committee is coming up with when they come up with them and not find out after they've awarded a contract for a fossil fuel burning thing that could have been dealt with differently. And, and so, you know, I don't think other people are gonna have a real objection to this, but you need to figure out what the structure is and how it's gonna work with the Capital Planning Committee for the Frontier Regional School. And that's why I think members from all four towns should reach out to Darius and, and Bill Hildreth and say, we think we could be helpful to you 
um, by helping when you're considering energy products, consulting, you know, have us help you out with research, et cetera, whatever your intentions are. Um, but the proposal that David wrote doesn't seem to really have a structure right. and, uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't explain exactly what your mechanism is as an energy committee. Now you can go to them, but you're, you're not part of the process when they're developing their ideas. And I think that's what you would like to achieve. Which means you go to the administration and they will give you an idea of how you set that framework up, framework up, Lori. That was going to essentially be my comment after Tim is, you know, you really need to know what the administration can do to help connect the dots. And I don't see why they would object. But no, I don't either. You know. Okay. I mean, yeah, we obviously wouldn't have any um, decision making power, but the idea is to have a long range picture and get information to the capital planning committee before decisions are made, like you said. Absolutely. But the path for that is going to the administration first so they can help you figure out what your next, next steps could be. And that was the, the piece that Tim just mentioned that I didn't really see the framework of that communication and, and how to, how you get the entree to that discussion with cap, that capital. Okay, we, we were thinking that um, you were the first step, but you're saying to go to Darius first and then, um, and oh, then sure. have him go back to you and say that, yeah, that this seems like an okay thing to have a, um, you know, an effect. I think uh, named group of people who that we are, we will consult with on frontier projects. Or? Well, I, I think it is important to go to Darius to see how he sees you working in his processes already. But what was clear to me on Saturday when we went to the our Slickman's Association meeting conference was that we haven't actually gotten together because of COVID and just everybody's been so crazy busy. Um, we haven't gotten together as a board and um, with our other town our boards. Place. And I, I'm so as soon as our town meeting is over sometime in May um, or June, I, I would propose that we have our four, you know, South County boards to come together. And this would be one of the agenda items okay. that we would put on as well, you know, because we need to figure out how we're working together on just a whole bunch of stuff in general, but, um, you know, not just the school formulas and not just highway formulas and, but just partnerships um, yep. and talk about the issues that have come up in, in like the South County Senior Center Oversight Board, South County EMS Board. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that's been coming up lately that we have new board members Mm -hmm. um that i hadn't even met for you know face to face with you know it's nice and it was, it was really nice. nice so i i just think um and it was very embarrassing to me um that i didn't know the sunderland board member mm -hmm. at the mma conference i'm like hi well it's everybody's new when we haven't been together I know, because of COVID. Together do you think that you guys can arrange to know. you know your four committee members can designate somebody then to, to contact darius and Feel them yeah. out. I mean, I think it's an ult uh, an ultimately a good it thing. A good idea. But uh, you know, just start with Darius. I mean, um, if he's a generally in agreement, then we'll work out a structure, and and you guys refine with him how you could be helpful. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. So annual town election warrant for approval and signature. It's in your signature file. Basically, okay. is calling the election Did with the officers this? to be elected. We read this into the record, right? Yep. So, um, Town of Deerfield annual town election, May 1st, 2023. Uh, this is the warrant um, to either the constables in the town of Deerfield in the county of Franklin. Greeting in the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town qualified to vote in elections to vote at the main meeting room at the town offices, 8 Conway Street in the village of South Deerfield on Monday, May 1st, 2023 from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the following purposes. To choose all necessary town officers, including one select board for a term of three years, one assessor for a term of three years, one constable for a term of three years, two Deerfield School Committee member uh, for the term of three years each, 
one elector under Oliver Smil, uh, Smith Will uh, for a term of one year, one um, Frontier Regional School Committee member for the term of three years, two planning board members for the terms of three years each, one planning board member for a term of two years, and one Tilton Library trustee for a term of three years. You are hereby directed to serve this warrant by posting to attested copies, uh, posting up attested copies um, thereof at five public places in said town, 14 days at least uh, before the holding of said meeting. Hereof fail not and make do upon, make do return of this warrant with your doing thereon to the town <laughs> clerk at the time and place of said meeting given under our hands this day this fifth day of april 2023 crazy how they talk back then yeah 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 i was gonna say <laughs> this um, good update that language there's a missing s <laughs> there is a missing s in greetings but no there's a missing s in um two deerfield school committee member Z for it yeah, member. Sure. Yeah. Is this frontier okay yeah, yeah. great all right um so can I ask you there's no second first oh second okay oh did you make a motion I made the motion oh. read the motion okay. we have a second yes okay second. all right now for discussion um there are there do we have somebody for each position running I believe us? we do but the yeah. warrant gets called with yeah. the, uh, the officers I don't know right. yes. I, I, I thought know. Dan uh the is the yeah is he on here isn't the um isn't the moderator up this yeah. year no, the, the moderator, moderator is up this year. Yeah, but he's not um, here. So that's a so before you guys sign it, we have to fix it. Thank you. We'll see. Yeah. Um, the three that I the one that you found, the one that I found, and then that. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. You so you want to add an S to green uh, greetings. Yes. Okay. I want to add an S to greetings. It'd be singular, but I'd like the good to, news like is we plural. now figured greetings. out how to print it all. Because so we have to print I'll it for mend, the book. I'll amend my motion to add one moderator for a term of three years. Are we sure the moderator is this year? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. I have. It's on, a, it's on the ballot. It's yep. on. Yeah, it's on the ballot. Oh. The ballots are in, by the way. Yep. Oh, okay. So yes. Oh, I guess it's a good thing. That so we got to fix the warrant, the, the yes. calling of, of the election. Yes, please. And then. Can you uh, write down what you caught, Tim, so I can make the sure S it's and the S. Yep, I got it. Mm -hmm. So we have a second. And Wait, again. she already second. Oh, you're, you're, second. you're, you amended your motion. Yep. And she seconded the amendment, right? Yes, okay. I did. Great. I did. <laughs> I'm like Jacob. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's fine. Thank you so much. So approval with these corrections. Yes. Thank you. Tim. And then we'll sign. <laughs> um, let's see. So, uh, let's see the uh, annual town meeting warrant. So this is a fairly. Not seen it yet. Let's see. I did send this to town council. Um, I do think she's going to wordsmith at least two articles. I also warned her that there was discussion about uh, passing over the opioid articles. Where's the, where's the I, I don't, did she have any more further information on the opioid? Um, no, and, and the consensus oh, when I was geez. discussing it with, at the Saturday meeting was, we can probably expect to see some changes from the legislature, potentially by the end of the fiscal year, but there's no guarantee. So to yeah. Carolyn's comment the last time we talked about, it's right there. Agenda. No, my oh. agenda. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. You, I had it yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you, you might have the, to your comment before about waiting to see what the Maybe not. legislature does, um, if they do do something by the end of June or it happens in July, then we could put the opioid articles on in the yeah. fall. As long as we don't lose the money. I, I'm, I was just going to say, let's just do it in the fall because, mm -hmm. you know, there was no new information. There isn't any they, new information. They keep saying at every of these meetings that I go to that there's new information. Yeah, coming, I but, haven't seen any but either. But they haven't pr promulgated any information. Nothing so. official. The only thing I do know is there was a discussion at the accounting, the accountants training sessions about another method that might be able to be used, which is appropriation through free cash. But well, people were having without a way to use it. 
people were having heartburn putting it in a stabilization correct car because two-thirds vote to take it out right and it was too onerous for kind of and and that was it's difficult for small right parts. right and that was one of the things um the mvp committee had uh in the last meeting that tim missed they had asked us to support um a climate change um you know stabilization account. and i think it should be climate change revolving so that we have the ability hey stan could you mute your uh thank you appreciate it stan um i think we should have a revolving fund so that if we have a grant comes available for like say culvert replacement and the match is 25,000 we have the select board can just vote money out of that account we don't have to go to a town meeting to appropriate that money so we have to find out how that would work right so you know it doesn't mean that we're not supporting the climate change account it just strict stabilization versus revolving fund and how practical it is. I just feel like a revolving fund would be more practical. So anyway. From a, from a use of funds, yes, you're probably yeah. right. Um, but that's, so the two things are sort of, do you deal with stabilization? And that's really what we're waiting to see is if they change the requirement for stabilization to be some other type of fund. Right. Um, and that was the reason when you brought that up, I went back and talked to, Brenda about it and she doesn't disagree maybe we wait until the fall so if, if potentially if the board wanted I'm, to pass I'm over okay those two we could bring it back I don't think it's worth voting and then have to go back and, re and revote it right yeah. and that was her caution to me as well so that was the reason I just put a notation on there about um perhaps the board would want to pass this over at annual town meeting those which, two which article was that those the are the two opioid articles. First, to create a stabilization fund oh, and okay. determine the funding sources. Yep. Oh, There's a okay. comment from Lisa and a comment from me. Towns have been pushing back on that stabilization because th that means every time you want to use money, you have, you have to have a meeting. Now, right. a council and a city could take that vote. But in a town, you have to, have it has to be a town meeting and it costs us money to do a town meeting. Right. But you don't do town meetings all the time. You only no. do it a couple times a year. Right. So if you have a program that you want to support. Right. Or a matching fund that you need, you don't have the ability to get the money. Right. And so that's why we, we sort of want to see what the legislature does, because I right. think they've heard these comments. So on the tennis courts, that's a vote town meeting? I thought, I thought that would just be a That was their submission in an article, Trevor. Yeah, it's in the capital plan, but they submitted the article formally. Oh, they the school did. Yes. They wanted it like this in each yes. town. Okay. That's fine. And then the... Um, and then it would be if approved for through community preservation it'd be over in there right so i put it we Got can it. we can address it in two different places yep. but they did formally request that That's there be fine. an article i just wasn't sure yeah and it's for the whole like it shows so the people, breakout of each town right just so people know we're not asking for a hundred thousand from us no just, no it okay. shows the breakout all right and the information that's in the capital plan is the amount that Deerfield, the 48,000, 49,000 right. Deerfield. Yep. Would okay. Pay. It's 14. The articles, yeah. Yeah, it's 14 and 15. Opioid, right? Yeah. Okay, I couldn't remember the article number. And Even though I've looked at it 50 times the today. The restriction thing is like we're taking over the, the restriction, correct? Article 12. So well, Article 12, we're going to, I yeah. have to send the original request to council, the original article from town meeting to council so she can review it i didn't get that until late this afternoon okay. before town before the executive session. that's 12 to figure out whether we need to take over that right uh, because the state can't come out and take a photo or something that's, well they have a the there's a form that they have to sign have off to on sign, and they're dragging and that their feet. requires why they have to sign the form and the, and the form requires them to have a formal visit. But why can't the state come out and take, they, they run this program, this correct? Years. It's two, been two years. It's embarrassing. Why can't they just come I out and do know, it? I don't know, Trevor. They don't have staff. Which then is, why do they run a grant program or a, whatever they do? I, I don't I, understand. Honestly, Who Donna sent an, Donna McNichol, who's PVMA's lawyer, sent an email this 
today or was it today? I think it was today about yeah. this. And everybody is just shaking their heads about why we can't get this finalization. Who's in charge there? Like, I don't is know. Is there somebody we can get on the phone and say, what is happening? <laughs> What's the situation? Well, just, I don't know so much like that- an article needs to be well, written there, Chris. This whole show, Tim has the- It's embarrassing. Um, email chains back and forth for the last two years and they they get to they get they said okay yes they're and all then, set yeah. and then they just drop then they get to really this and it, it sort of drops off the radar and i can totally commiserate with dropping off the radar no, because remember, it's busy it was the indian house exterior yes the first phase they haven't come back to us for more money because yeah. they've, they've been, been waiting for that we told them we weren't going to give them any more money until they uh did the deed restriction right right and so there was a whole explanation about how that could work from Donna. And did I, I don't think I blind carbon copied you, but if I didn't, I will. Yeah, you it. probably did. It's okay. I, um, yeah. yeah, you have more familiarity, Tim, yeah, than I'd I even do. Yeah, <laughs> I think basically that, um, you know, the deed restriction requires that they can't sell it to somebody else. It has right. to remain as a museum and it yep. has to have a public school function. Got it. And, um, you know. That's... It is it is already deed restricted that way, mm -hmm. but this was a separate deed restriction right. related to the CPA, the the, the, the CPA funds. funds because we we as a town put the you know money into it. You 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 want to make sure it's for public benefit, right? right? right. So the idea is by putting this additional restriction on, then for sure it's going to remain open to the public and have a public school, right? Yeah, even if they sell it to some other nonprofit, um, the, the 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 deed restriction would follow follows the sale. That makes sense. Yeah, and it just means that you know little kids can go this there. This also needs People the town moderator. Yeah. So they still have have they gotten the money or not? Yeah, they oh, I, they, they haven't gotten any money yet. No, we haven't given them the money because. Yeah, because they've been, been out all the money. They've been stuck for two years. Yes. Right. And years. that's what they're upset about. And I don't blame them in the least. So Donna's years. request was to try to iron some of this out so that we weren't dependent on mass historical to finalize this and take another year. Right. Yeah. So Lisa and Donna had, there has been communication between Donna and Lisa. Um, I think some of the, but I have to give her some information. Because of the mass historical commission. I just think it was something that they didn't get to and they didn't get to and, yeah. and that now maybe it's mass historical but it's right the, it it's sounds like of, it was yeah it sounds like it was covid really i think interrupted mixture, a lot yeah no, well, they would, they, when covid came they wouldn't come out right i remember and, that uh, but they still haven't come out even though mm -hmm. this started when i was here there's All right. when i first got here years. yeah yeah so i know you're frustrated people love government this specific maybe thing. donna and lisa can maybe natalie blake can get somebody from the mass historical commission to come out here that's actually a great suggestion let's do a field trip yeah. okay let's have the governor come and greet them <laughs> what a beautiful place to come see too they were right around the corner mm -hmm. at the, the yeah williams okay so uh then we've got stabilization fund for frontier oh this was a uh so this was a request. Uh, I'm on our Article 13. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just zipping through them. I didn't yeah. see anything no. until then. So 13 was to see if the vote uh, town will vote pursuant to Mass General Law to establish a stabilization fund for Frontier capital stabilization. Capital stabilization I think stabilization is what it fund. is, right? Yes. That was an additional request that came directly from Derry because this is asked for all the time, right? So I think the towns say, why don't you have a capital stabilization fund every time the school comes and says hey we're going to create a capital stabilization fund does the town say no we don't think you should have the money to well, is that the background? it's been back and forth back and forth because everyone thinks well no you should bring a warrant article each project in the town votes on it which is how they've been doing it. that's how we've that's been how doing we got it. the tennis so court. that's why and because joe mercury mercurian came in early and said hey let's do a when we developed the capital plan mm -hmm. and the capital committee was to do a capital plan with a, a you know, a, a fund and the, we got the committee, but we didn't get the fund. Uh, so now we're like, and then, so every time we do a meeting, the town say, well, how, how come you don't have a fund for this mm -hmm. instead of a warrant article? And then when they asked for the, okay, that explains it's a you. back and forth, back and forth okay. thing, but because I so wasn't we'll sure exactly where it came from. Time. And I don't know how you'd find, I mean, I see you'd create it and then you'd have to figure out how you'd fund it. We can't even fund our own. That's so, true. Right. <laughs> that's the problem. So 
Um, but at least if they create the fund, they can then do yes. some planning to. They could put some of their EMD in it, right. that kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. That make. Thank you for explaining yep. that. Sure. Um, and then we may pass over to the fall. This is the opioid one, the fourteen and fifteen. Right. Yep. Okay. That that and we we would need to make that decision relatively soon so okay. that we properly notify the right. Um, the principal, particularly Dan, running the meeting. We're the first of the four towns to have town meeting. This I right? believe so. And the, yeah, because Sunderland's is the first is Friday. The last Friday. It's the Friday after ours. And Waitley's is the last Tuesday. So there's the 25th. Conway's is Thursday. Right. Okay. Conway's okay. is the latest, I think. Wow. So, and then Article 16 is to see if we want to move annual town meeting to the third Saturday of May each year. Yes. And it will be at 9 a.m. And so, so that'll be an interesting there is discussion. a following or there's a succession article that would set an official um, special town meeting. framework for a special town meeting because consistently for almost as long as I've worked here, there's been a fall town meeting. Yeah, because you get your free cash and, and you figure out so, what you can do for capital. You know, to Julie's credit, she she realized that if we had a little bit of a framework, there's some planning that can go into mm -hmm. that second town meeting, right? That we then have sort of a target date. So it makes it a little bit easier for us to do some of that planning so that we're ready for a fall town meeting. Okay. So they're also proposing to change the is the election always yes. on a Monday? It is the Monday yes, following. Yes, it's tied to annual town meeting. So right. Right. Julie did a research. Yeah, no, um, I, I, And I think what she came up with, I don't know how much wordsmithing Lisa might consider doing to it, but mm -hmm. she was really trying to take all three of those elements into account. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, is, that the, uh, is that 18? That was 16 or 17 is. I think we only have, don't so we only have night Where's the article? election one though? I didn't print myself a copy, so. That's on the, that's on the back. Um, it's, uh, it's the last page. Oh, there's another, there's a, no, no the, um, to move the election. Oh, that was in that. Uh, it's in, in the article. It's in 17. Yeah, yes. no earlier than the, the following Tuesday at 10 a.m. Oh, the meeting 16. will then adjourn okay. to. Now, I don't know well, if the meeting minute. has to adjourn um, because the election of officers is an election, but that's that's a leading question. It's and there's a because the two are tied, if you read um the end of the warrant, it also mentions the elected officers. Oh, got it. Yeah. Because that's at the end of town meeting, yeah. we adjourn to the polls and then dissolve right. after the election. That's right. Is yeah. how that works. Yeah. That's right. So I bet we're going to get some comments from Lisa on it. But functionally, okay. I think it's a it's a good approach to consider to take to town meeting to 16, consider. Yeah. Right. And then eighteen is to for the town clerk to treat Saturdays as legal holidays. Yeah. Um, I think you may see some additional time language, time. but yes, this so is so idea. that we can adjust the the how many times you got to be open for right. For right. early and voting. You have to do this acceptance in order to treat Saturday as that because right now Otherwise Saturday can be very meeting. expensive if we have to have election Staff. workers come in and cover for that voter registration period. Right. Right. Um, and I know a lot of town clerks that I shouldn't say a lot. I know three town clerks that think it's a good idea. Okay. And then the our article 19 is the zoning by law for yes. accessory apartments, which I have no clue about. Would and I am a, not a huge fan of how the formatting came out in that, but it's tied to how it was um, oh. presented to me as a document. Are so, we, Are we going to get explanations from the planning board? I'm you're going to have to. Planning board has to report to town meeting on it. So I would, my question would in they terms of motions us? is perhaps we have one, a member of the planning board make that motion. But Unless would, you're married to the idea of doing it yourself, no. but they do have to report to town meeting. But would they report to? Um, the, are they going to come and talk at a pre-town meeting or something? Is there been any that's other a, that's a question that? that we need to actually have a have a comment from Annalie about because Julie and yes. Carolyn, after the last joint budget meeting, we had a brief discussion about that. Um, the date for the info, annual town meeting info session is the 20th, I believe, which is a yeah. Thursday. 
Yeah. Um, if we're going to go through the warrant, my suggestion was try to pare down the financial articles to something easily digestible and limit that info session to about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, but the element of the accessory apartment zoning change really needs to be explained by the planning board. Yeah. Now, there's two ways they could do it. They could attend and explain it, or they could provide a written explanation. And I, that's how you report to town meeting anyway either through a written document or through a verbal report at town meeting. Typically, planning board in Deerfield does a verbal report has the, um, at town meeting. Has there been many, like, have, I assume they've held hearings on this. They now, have. But have they been sparsely attended? or I don't people, know. I wonder if people, I don't know. That's why it feels like, you know, if they want it to pass, they really need to kind of get everybody educated. But yeah, the other thing is that it's in the zoning, um, but is it? planning it's because some of these things are subject to special permit and right. um and who is the special permit granting authority that's all i want to is that zoning no it, i believe I think it's, it's planning. planning yeah and that's one of the things that uh, yeah it's talking about the planning board will allow right. so it's pretty much a planning board function yeah. okay And so they went through a, they've done this for almost a year, yeah. uh, really refining how and, they wanted they to felt, treat it. They felt bad that not a lot of people participated in the first public hearing. So they had a second public they hearing. They had a second public hearing. As a result. And again, there wasn't a lot of people there, but everyone was mostly supportive. And so to some extent, it might be useful if the chair and the vice chair got together and did talking points because that might be enough of an explanation not only to include at an info session but also put in the town meeting guide oh yeah that's a good idea they, because i have a, some bullets from that right just, so. right because summer. i think it could be yeah. part of how they quote unquote report right that's nobody just, can see me somebody's making gonna be points. asking somebody's gonna be I know, asking okay you know my my comment was that the septic systems just need to be checked and they address that um uh, and parking is 11 here or they it's in here mm -hmm. the, um if it's an on-site septic system the owner must obtain written approval from the board of health okay birding, building permit because it, it you know a lot of times when you know what size right um septic system they have and to that point, as it could connect to the sewer system, Kevin and I had a conversation and I was in the middle of writing an, mm. a memo and just didn't get to the end of it. But right. Kevin's suggestion, and I will formalize it with him, Kevin's suggestion is in the event that you have something like this that gets built out in a property that's on the sewer system, mm. there should be a hookup fee. Oh, absolutely. Because they're adding to right. the cost of the system. Yeah. And you know, you add a, a whole apartment that may have two bedrooms, you have a shower, you have kitchen unit, perhaps washer and dryer, and there you are. Um, this is what yeah. we talked about earlier today. Um, there really needs to be a recognition in, this, in the same way that they've done it in so the bylaw we'll for to... the sewer piece, but that could fall within the regulation. Well, I was going to say that should go into our regulations. Uh, I believe that should. Yeah. I just want to say thank you to Kevin. Um, I had texted him when my phone was working and uh, I was over at the 1888 building mm -hmm. and there was a glass out of the basement window in the, yep. I mean, just completely we detached. We talked about that too. And so Kevin went right over there and fixed it before we had the rainy weather on Tuesday. And so thank you, Kevin. That was and he just wanted nice. to make sure that he, you guys were aware of his comments that as they relate to any in-law or accessory apartment that might get built Okay, so any other questions on the warrant at the moment? Um, I just want to make sure this stuff all about the sewer. What's Are you talking about, about the, the special sewer? legislation? Operate systems of sewers, yeah, the okay, special that's legislation a separate, thing. That's a separate thing. Right. Is that a separate thing on our, um, on our agenda? On the agenda, agenda. Okay. yes. Okay. So we'll come back to that. Yeah, um, I'm going to skip over budget discussion at the moment. School roof band note issuance for approval and signature. Yep, we need to sign that. Well, we're going to have to redo that election warrant and have you sign at your convenience. We will. So, there's five of them. The so earliest right we here. can do that is tomorrow. That's because I can't get to the paper to fix the book one. <laughs> so then, this is the uh, school roof band. Um, 
and this is just the balance of the loan to date, due date October 6, 2023. So it's four and three eighths percent. They're going up, huh? All right. So this is for what? This is the bond, the, the band for the school. Mm -hmm. So what's left? Um, the amount of this issue is 38,000, the balance of the loan on issue is one four, but I appreciate our, so we only have 38,000 left on this and it's going to be I believe off. we're scheduled to be paid off. We're going to be paid off. Right. Right. So I think they only did this year. fall. Yeah. So it's a, it's like a six month ban. It's yeah. a six so. month ban. Okay. Because we can't pay it now. Yeah. Right. We'll pay. I think when we have free cash, right? That's the idea. We didn't have certified. You have to have certified free right. cash to pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why that's why you have to. I'll do make that. a motion to approve the. Let's say this again: the <laughs> the school <laughs> roof ban uh, note reissue for approval and signature. So make a motion to. Approve I'll second this. that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Kevin McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And band is really a bond anticipation note. Yeah. Yep. Which is the short term borrowing allowance we have from the state. All members sign. Oh, yeah. So there's multiple spots. Is this? Okay. So, Tim, your question on the sewer thing. That, that's uh, this, this thing right here. So, that's all one it's thing. All one thing. Yep. Thank you. Sarah says thank you in advance. Yes. <laughs> um, so House amendments to sewer, Deerfield sewer operations bill. What was the, Ready, what were you needing? Do you want me to get you a pen? Okay. Oh, oh, here. I'll just borrow his. I didn't know. Yeah, sure. Know. You know what? I'm going to have to borrow two because I have a purple pen. Okay. I can't oh, believe yeah. that we came with color tonight instead <laughs> of, I didn't even realize that I picked up. So what's the question on the? Um, no, I just, uh, I know Tim wanted to make sure that the house amendments so the house amendments there was a section that, that they amended the town meeting didn't actually vote okay. and tim had sent a, a note out to lisa i had called lisa about it um and we basically responded to corinne and said you can't make a change to a special legislation request that hasn't been approved by town meeting what did they want to change it was an addition in section four right tim i believe so but I think what Lisa said to me was, we did vote this at town meeting, and the thing that I was flagging up was we, we had, you had put in earlier language that said not less than, and it should be not more. Than. Not more than. Right, right. But what I'm seeing here doesn't look. I, I don't see it in any of the email trail. Um, you know, so I remember. I want to get a printout of what okay. is the actual. Language. Correct language, and we did vote on it already. So we did vote it. At, we did vote that at town meeting, and there was an amendment on the floor. So amendment on the floor of the house? No, the floor of, of town, town meeting. meeting. Yes, remember? I don't remember what we amended. the not more. Oh, is it wait? Not more versus not less. Yeah, I actually, that was an amendment on the floor, if I recall. I don't think it was because the whole point of it. Uh, I, I could be wrong, and somebody would have to watch the video, but. We talked about this for like three months. I remember when we had right. a discussion about should it in the be, middle of summer to been, October. It be, maybe it was on the floor, um, but in any case, I know the vote was for not more than. Um, so, I was pretty sure that this has already been voted, and Lisa said that she responded saying yes, the correction was correct, and I don't know the if she correction addressed, was correct. Okay. I don't know if she addressed so. Because I, I believe we already voted this. And the reason why I don't want it on the warrant if we've already voted it is because we're just going to re relitigate this whole debate. Right. No, it was approved by town meeting to also allow you to make such corrections as necessary to get the legislature to approve it. Yeah. Right. That's so always an element. Any, base. So why I don't is, see why we need to vote it again. We've already voted it. I'm pretty sure that we voted it. Why is it highlighted? It says any person injured on their property by any that's what action I think was said added. select board under this act may recover damages from said town under chapter 79. That's what I thought was added. Because when I looked at it the first time, I 
didn't remember seeing that. So I, I think we need to clarify from Lisa, what is it that we're changing in this thing? Because I don't want to reel yes. the idea that we're going to talk about All 25 percent more or less. Um, no, and that's that's it's not just confusing for you all. It's confusing for me as well. So let's get let's skip this and get an answer on I it. I think we should get well, Chris to watch the video because <laughs> he, he just really though. wants to. Well, I know, but if we can't remember, then I went back and I looked at the minutes of the meeting, and that's when I had a question. I don't think Lisa and I circled back around to what my question was, okay. which was independent of the com the question you had for her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is this because we obviously have a drop dead date to get this to them so they can get it under the legs the floor. Right. They they'll keep continue to process it. Corinne reached out to us okay. and asked where we were with it. Well, the date so this would have to get fixed anyways, because this agreement is entered on this day of March. So this has to get fixed too. Yeah. Um oh no, I'm so I'm looking at something totally different. Yeah, that's, sorry, but yeah. that does need to get fixed. That's PVMA, right? Right. Yeah, that's a clerical mistake that we can fix. Yep, that's fine. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Because I, I, I went back and I looked to see what they had sent us. I don't see a sewer thing. Yeah. So somebody tell us what to do later on. Yeah, it this sounds is like we're not figured it out yet. This is the thing. I think we got this big email trail maybe, thing, and yeah. it says right. petition for special legislation, town of Deerfield, and 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 so if it's just that yellow thing, that's fine. Um, so, but any person injured on their own property, we're liable for? I'm confused on that. I don't understand what that's I don't, about. I don't like that language. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't either. Any, anywhere where the town's liable for somebody getting hurt in their own house makes me nervous. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that if, like, the pipe blows up or something, right. and, I get, and they walk into the middle of the broken pipe, hurt their leg. Any person, That's the kind of thing that they're talking any about. person injured in their property by any action of said select board under this act may recover damages from said town under said chapter one, chapter 79. Oh. So I'm that was my question when I read what it. I'm going to circle. It is still in here. Isn't pay not less than. So it should be not more than it is what I thought we voted. Okay. And then ask I mean, about section four. I'm confused. I know we already voted this. And it's that section four that I was confused about because I don't recall voting that. No, we did not vote that. What? That doesn't even make sense. Right. Yeah. So this is this is why we're all confused. It's very confusing. Right. Yeah. So yep. Okay. Thank you. Let's all right. Yeah. Let's table that. Um Frank, you got a meeting on the eleventh, right? We got a meeting on the eleventh. Yep. Franklin <laughs> Regional Retirement Board at Add two percent cost of living adjustment. That's fine. Do we have any? Do we have to? There is that? a whole. There is a whole attachment to read through. Um, Dale Kowacki reached out to me and asked if we had made any progress on it. And I had a whole email snafu with this thing, but it doesn't go into effect until FY twenty six. And you guys don't have to make a decision now. You can take it home and read it. But nine out of Nine towns have approved it at this point. So he's checking in with the other towns to find out if the other towns have done yeah, it. It makes sense. Well, it says, as requested, we've prepared an analysis of the impact of Franklin yeah. Regional Retirement System liabilities and funding schedule as a result right. of a one-time increase of an additional 2% on July 1st, 2022, up to the COLA base of 17,000. Um, we later used the data and results of the January 1st, 2022 valuation to develop the change in the unfunded actuarial accrued liability and the resulting impact on the FY26 yes. and later appropriations. The right. results of our analysis are provided under, under a seven and a quarter percent investment rate of return. Uh, cost of living adjustments may be granted. I think what they're doing is just making sure the calculations still work out. Okay. Right. When's this supposed to stop? 2032, right? 2034. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, I, I think it it's 2034. 2034. Yeah, 2034. So. I know, right? And if an increase is given, the cold percentage. Oh, it is applied to a retiree's retirement 
allowance up to 17,000 if the COLA on blah, blah, blah is increased from three to 5%. Right. Got it. And so they have the analysis um, that you can read through. I don't know what the, the temperature of the board is to make this change tonight, but it's not something that we can't carry forward to another agenda. And I understand what Dale's looking for. He's looking to figure out what the consensus of the towns are and the official votes, but. So Deerfield's actual assessment yeah. is 860,000. Oh, no, I was just gonna make. Oh, so you can follow yeah. your line. Yeah, it's 860. Actual assessment. Dale Kowacki is the director at the Franklin Regional Retirement System. I'm sorry. I assume people that know is, who Dale is. I've yeah, that's, that's, that's no, that's okay. That's, yeah, I Dale is the director. It's me that doesn't have the information. That's why I asked. I yeah, and I didn't see Dale anywhere on this. No, he's no. actually in the email. That's the attachment um, that Chris printed out so you could read through it. Um, but Dale sent it out. A couple of times and he hasn't gotten a hundred percent response from all the towns so that's why he reached he, out again. he's uh he follows up really good he does he does and if you have a question he's really you know he you can just call him up and ask him yeah he's really good and that's what i mean about digesting all of this um uh i have to say it I because can... you've got the actuarial pieces as well it can get very complicated Okay. So it says two thirds of the cities and towns within the system must approve the increase. So mm -hmm. have we reached the two third level already? I don't think so. I think that's why he reached out to us. Okay. So if they don't, then this doesn't go forward. And then what? It, what's the harm other than that people get less in their retirement? Th that's, they get less in their retirement. And Parak did that. So they don't really ever get a cost of living adjustment other than the COLA, right? So this is a local option. It allows them another 2%. It's a local, yes, it is a lo it's considered a local adjustment. Okay. They're not getting wealthy, I can tell you that. You know, yeah, these so. are on fixed incomes and um, one other thing here. State has coal expenses. So if you want to digest it, we could probably push it two weeks. And Dale can call and yell at me. It's okay. It's just a lot to absorb. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more chart. Uh, really trying to keep pace with Social Security is the issue because they don't get Social Security, right? Right. Yeah. So, just so that I think I understand what we're saying, that what is this um, under the FY 2026? Is the 24,551, is that? what the retiree is entitled to, or is that the increase to the Deerfield budget? Um, I, you know, that would be an increase to our budget. Right. Yeah. So it would add 24,000. Yeah. Yes, right. it would yeah. add 24,000 to it. Um, and if you look at like this chart here, it kind of shows over the years what Social Security has paid, and we've been a steady 3% the whole time. Right. right. There's been a couple of years where 2 and 2.8, but mostly 3%. So... So the average is um, to, so Social Security is a little less than our average, really. Looking, oh, that was that year. Let me just see Social Security. So in, in 2023, it's gone up. And is this for just for Deerfield on this chart? Or is this all? 
This is all. all this the is whole all county. of it. I That's believe the whole yeah. county, the whole group. Yeah. So you look at the, you know, a base start, and then um, this is our group. This is Social Security. So they've had sometimes they've Social Security's had increases. Sometimes they haven't. We've always had an increase. Right. But we're we're just kind of even or a little less than Social Security overall. Mm -hmm. um, and some, you know, it's it's pretty close. Yeah, and you know, the other question then becomes: All right, I can envision again where we're going to give a three percent increase, and <clears throat> Social Security is going to give nothing. Mm -hmm. It's happened. Yeah, it's happened. Uh -huh. Yeah, these several are several the times. These are the years. Yeah. <laughs> yep, these are the years. Yeah. So. We're making up for. Is there really a difference? I mean, I don't know. It's not much. I mean, it's slightly different. Obviously, but not much. We're not going to be able to make a decision. No, let's we'll pass today. tonight. But all right. So what I'll do is I will ask. Yeah. I'll, I'll put tabled and have this added to the agenda. Yeah. Does that okay. work for everybody. Yep, that's mm -hmm. good. That's good. Um, yeah, I know we're getting late here. Let's. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, I can tell by Chris. There's a face. lot on this agenda. Yeah, right. I know there is like, a lot. Um, so that's done. We're going to hold that. This was done. Okay, so agreement with Cumpfick Valley Memorial Association for Storage of Records. Right. I want to thank um, Peter. He's been over there. I stopped and had a long conversation with oh, him. Indeed. I don't think he can ever have a short one, right? He's so good. He's got so much knowledge. Um, I stopped yeah, I in to get a wheelchair, and it was like, and uh, it was really, I saw the really good. I'm like, you oh, missed that. I missed that. Yeah, I guess I did. Um, so to everybody's credit, everybody's worked really hard on yeah, this. Yeah, so we're, I think we're good with this. I, I feel comfortable. I've read it a couple of times. Do you have any right. comments on it? The only thing is there may there's a clerical error that Tim caught, which is and you caught, which is the March thing. But yeah, that's a clerical error. And then so we'll just the the vote to uh, authorize um, the town administrator to sign pending final review from town council on agreement. Right. Great. I'm good with that. So because I haven't heard back from Lisa, and I figure. If it's a turnaround of a day or two, yeah, just to um, if you guys are all set with it, I think that would yep. facilitate particularly Carolyn's concern about moving those records before yeah. it's too yep. damp. Yeah. Right. So I'll make a motion to approve the memorandum of agreement for storage of Deerfield's historic town records between the town and PVMA. I will second that. Yes. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. And, oh, and I'm sorry, that was friendly amendment to have the town administrator sign when completed with the attorneys. And I will second. That. Thank All you. Right. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. So, so, so page six of seven is just going to be town of Deerfield, Casey Warren. Right. Yes. Yep. We would change exactly. that as a clerical yep. change. And, but yeah, fundamentally, yeah. you guys yeah. have agreed to it. In yeah, substance. Okay, so um, ARPA second fund trance revenue replacement vote approval of capital projects. We did a. So you did vote. one vote, um, but just votes, no. We voted. So you all did a vote um, when we. I think wasn't it last year? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we voted. Um, I say we because I sit at the table and I shouldn't, yeah. but the select board voted to use ARPA funds as revenue replacement. I talked to Brenda about it um, and our suggestion, because we didn't commit the second tranche. Correct. We hadn't received it and we yep. weren't sure at the time whether we would need to take another vote. Should that be necessary? That's the reason that's on the agenda. Right, I don't think it is, but. Um, it might not be a bad idea. That was Brenda's suggestion, even though neither she nor Tom thinks think, we can necessarily yeah, have to, to, but. So let me understand ones. what you're talking about. Are you talking about accepting the second tranche from the fellow government? No, or? the second tranche is here. Right. Yeah. But at the time that these ca the capital projects were previously discussed, we didn't have that money. And there wasn't as much clarity about whether we had to take two votes or not. For the revenue replacement. For the revenue vote. replacement. Saying so that we're replacing the revenue. And that, because that's a can, select Then we can vote. use the ARPA for whatever we feel and, is important. Right. And, uh, you know, what I'm saying, uh, I don't understand who is who is the what does revenue replacement mean? Great. So revenue Question. replacement means you use those funds through the authority of the select board. OK, I'm, all, okay. The I'm all in favor of voting. Yeah. That. <laughs> no, so you can was, take that vote and it'll just cover our butts no, if they need it. I, what I, it was was just that um, 
It was that we were replacing lost revenue from COVID from previous uh, fiscal budgets um, due to COVID. And one, the, the, the um, Treasury allowed us to take that vote. Federal government allows us to take that vote. And then that allowed us to use the ARPA money on whatever we felt was needed based mm -hmm. on lost revenue. So mm -hmm. it gave us a lot more flexibility as right. to what to use the funding for. Okay. Otherwise, we had to go and do all the grants and the reporting and every single right. project. This gave us a one-time vote. It yeah. allowed, you know, it was only for money that was below a certain threshold. Right. We're a small town, right. but it allowed us to do it. Mm -hmm. So um, our caution was Brenda and I, it doesn't hurt to take a second vote for the second tranche. Okay. Um, so yeah, you did it for the first one, but not we did. One. Yeah. Right. We hadn't had the second one yet. So. Right. We hadn't received the money and the timing on when we would receive it was still up in the air because you got money directly to the town. And then you had money that came through the council of governments as the county, the county. county function. Even though there's no county. Right. Even though there's no county. Right. So the, um, so I'll make a motion to approve the revenue replacement for uh, the second tranche of ARPA funding. I will second that. Any further discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Tim Hilchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. So that's done. Um, capital, approved capital projects with the so, funding, ARPA funding. So you guys had a conversation when the CIPC presented their capital plan yeah. to you all which you have to have a hearing on April 14th for officially, according to the bylaw. Yeah. Um, the notice will go in the newspaper, I think tomorrow, mm -hmm. Friday. Um, but there were several projects and I believe, Chris, you printed the capital plan, right? Yes. So there's several projects that came up as a question during those capital meetings and were discussed briefly last week about funding sources and the fundings there's there's several that you have just shy of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the second tranche um our capital suggestion was to utilize arpa funds for partial funding sources for the capital requests that came through um, but we are very mindful that we don't know exactly what the leary lot's going to cost and especially since there's some elements that weren't initially planned in the Leary lot that are now in front of you. And Chris alluded to it a little bit earlier, and that's the uh, electric vehicle charging unit grant process that we've been working with Rivermore Energy on. But the ARPA projects that were suggested or the the capital projects that were suggested for funding through ARPA were projects that can immediately benefit the town. One of them was the request for funding for the inspections, um, cloud permitting. Um, yeah, Are they, that makes the sense. cloud permitting process for inspections yep. and health and stuff. Good on that. So what that was. Was, was, it was that what was the other item? Um, I'm I don't. Have it doesn't the, have the capital the plan. Freight liner truck, the Freightliner truck. Right. So the Freightliner truck, which is, I think, the dump truck, right, yeah. Kevin? Right. And um, then the other one was... And the, the sander body, right? The sander dump body. So those are the two critical projects that Kevin and I talked about the, the seven, other day. The, right. the Freightliner, we were going to literally save seventy or $80,000. Right. right. If we vote it now and he can sign a contract, it's being built, right, Kevin? Yes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in the queue, but we're kind of in the back of the queue, but it still hopefully should still be less than a year. So, um, and then the sand and then the sander body is is critical because the person that we're getting it from, uh, which is Viking, uh, the person that's up there, he was willing to come down and give us a hand doing the changeover to save us some money, but he's also retiring fairly shortly. So once he retires, then he's no more. Price help. goes away. Um, and that if we don't do that, then might as well go ahead and add another. 12 to 15,000 for installation that we could, we're trying to save, you know, so we're trying to do as much as we can in-house to, to try and keep our costs down. The the other, the problem, other thing with the sander body is that it really is not safe. Mm -hmm. Right. Not. There's a public and safety I, there, issue there. Uh, definitely. There's a huge public safety issue. So, yeah, yeah it is the bad. Um, so, I, you know, I feel strongly that we should vote that. Well, let me ask a couple of questions. Number one, we just got a request from the police department to 
consider spending $212,000 from the first tranche of ARPA money, which is going to leave $200,000 for the Leary lot. We've been thinking about having $400,000 at least for the Leary lot. So we need more than that. That's, so the actual that's a problem. was $500,000 in the initial vote. Right. We don't, we're, I'm pretty sure it's going to be more expensive and we can, right. we can talk to you about that. Right. So, but a hundred thousand dollar increase on the HVAC system. Um, I don't know uh, to your point. I don't know if there's a way to ratchet that back down because costs for materials and labor and all those things have increased. Right. I mean, it, we've but got, you we've, do have some money in the second tranche that you could allocate to that. Well, I'm going to the second tranche. So, number one, this capital improvement project plan, it says ARPA question mark. Is ARPA question mark for the total 325? Yes. 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 And is it for the total 3788? Oh, what's that's the uh, inspection building inspector there. software? Yes. And and is it uh, and the total of everything? It's it, the yeah. total of each so line. We're basically talking about wiping out the second tranche. Look at the fourth page. It shows a breakdown of the funding sources and what would be left. It's at the bottom of that. I think it's the fourth page. I have um, three hundred thirty-two thousand one hundred twenty-one, right, and that does remain that. Oh, like remain right, and so, so where we're talking it's about really three, this breakdown right here. That's only so. What's left? Three twenty-five, but that does not include an additional hundred and five thousand dollars for the HVA. So basically, of all the ARPA front, first, and second tranche. Yes. No. Thanks. Yeah, I am. You know, bottom line is we've been going through this 1888 building project, assuming that there's going to be a roughly $750,000 that's going to be paid in that project if it gets approved, if we get funding, if we get earmarks. Basically, we're talking about that's not available anymore. So you stand to wipe out all your stabilization if you have to do that. So wait, I'm, I'm and the other, the other question I have, and you can correct me on this, Kevin, you, you should know this. Um, I understood that there was some discussion that the um, the capital the timeline for replacement of these things uh, these these large trucks and pieces of equipment um, oftentimes you know a useful life of a tractor for instance is done in hours mm -hmm. uh, and some some pl places get fifty thousand hours out of a tractor and and where are you in your lifespan I mean. Is this an accurate stabilization timeline? Yes. Yeah, base, basically, when we're looking at our trucks, if we can get 20 years out of a truck, we're doing extremely well. Um, you know, it's it's the it's not the mileage that, that kills it. It's basically it's what we do. Um, you know, the equipment gets ridden hard because of it's basically it's construction. Um, long story short is, is, yeah, we're definitely more than due for the truck. Um, and again, you know, where we, uh, to use Trevor's terminology, recycle, which was, thank you, by the way, that's a great word, um, recycling the vehicle over. So that way we, we basically play the shell game with, with equipment to make sure that we've got something up at the transfer station to haul with so that way we're not utilizing a, a brand new truck that's going to be getting slopped over with, with all of the leaves and the brush and debris that you can see what the other truck looks like because of that. Um, that's why we're trying to do the shell game of taking 04 or 2004, put that up the transfer station, get rid of the 1995 that's up there now. Um, and then, so 04, 04, basically 04 is like, a, and I don't want to use the word reserve because I know that's not a good word to use, but that is a, it's, basically it's a reserve truck. I mean, if I really need something to put on the road, I can like night, night, the 1995 I have now at the transfer station, I can't put that on the road. There's no way, you know, I'd have to put probably six, $7,000 just, you know, into drive train. And anyway, um, basically long story short, what I'm looking for is what I need. Um, you know, uh, we've already pushed the, the uh, loader two years. And if we do it again, it will be third year. Um, and then as, as you keep kicking the can down the road, we see what happens with the transfer with the, uh, um, wastewater treatment plants. You know, the longer we wait, the more expensive it's going to be. So if you want to go ahead and push something off, I don't know where you're going to come up with the extra money later on. Um, but this is this is the equipment that I need to do my job. 
I have a question. So how much is in the ARPA funding for the first tranche? We haven't spent it all. We have not, but it has been committed. Every penny? No. Yes. What was the, what was, I mean, we committed it to the, to the Leary lot. You committed five projects. Right. One of which was the Leary lot. Well, you, how much was, did we give to the Leary lot? Was 500,000. Right. Okay. It's then, going to be more than that. I get you. Right. So then the, the other items were the HVAC, HVAC over here, which was like 125 or something. No, like it was that. 100. Because 100. that was okay. our estimate at the time. Now and it's then looking like it's going to be the, 200. The other item was some, was the, was the, muncher or the blower or something was 60 grand last so, year no we had um how much was it it was the mini excavator and that was a hundred thousand we have bought that right and then um, and then the other uh but then we also bought a, a chipper for 60 i think it was because that was a safety issue i think that right kevin that was a chipper yeah 60. correct and, and actually to be honest with you i still haven't received it yet either i'm okay. still waiting on Still waiting on a, a delivery date. So, and we had gotten seven hundred something thousand at I that think. point. You was seven hundred half of the yeah. half of the payments, roughly seven something. And then, so that right, that there's it, something I'm missing, and I can't. There is there's something is else, for. but but that was the first tranche. We stuck five hundred for Leary. Right. So the second one is also seven hundred thousand. Correct. And that's um seven fifty or something. It's about, so then it's about three quarters. So then um. And and with that, we were hoping to fund the rest of the Leary lot, and we were hoping right. to maybe put some money towards the 1888 building. So that's the that communication was piece that on. wasn't shared with that me. That was early on. So uh, then the second, so then looking at where we're at with capital stuff now, and th those were really the projects, right? We didn't have anything else. We were no as much as I would no. love to do the common or other stuff well, or sidewalks or all kinds of other things we need to do. common jumped 400 and some odd thousand yeah, dollars. Right. Okay. We haven't, yeah. we haven't and talked. Sort of I'm just thinking, capital love to said, spend the money let's put a pause places. on that because right. we don't have all the information, nor do we have the ability to do that in a quick turn. So now we're talking about out of the 700,000, putting 325 towards this truck. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, just shy of uh, right around 40 for the um, permitting software right. and the 55,000 for the sander, the bot, the sander body, right, Kevin? So yeah. 380, um, so it, 417, 8. So I did the calculation. So it leaves about 330 right. left. If and we, that's if not don't counting fund, the additional hundred thousand dollars we now know we could be looking at for the HVAC system. Which we may decide not to do. Which we you're, might, you're we'll gonna do, have to something, do something, but we may not spend. I mean, you only get one bid, and it's twice what you think. I mean, so you're gonna spend more money to go out to bid a second time. I get no, that. No, we would maybe put in air conditioning units until we. I mean, is this we're putting two hundred thousand dollars into HAV's system when we don't? We potentially we don't even know if it's compatible to our. Well, but the issue is, is you have to fix the problem. It's too we wet in there. We so. can't fix it tonight. But anyways, right. no, we know we've we got a liability of 100000 there. a certain amount to that project. Yes, we did. Yes. Not so realizing it was going to be yeah. twice the cost. If you're going to still allocate it, then then find some other place to build up the you know the, the 112. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to come I from think what we need is to have what ARPA money has been expended. We got that. Yep. We haven't expended and, as much as we should have. Right. We haven't committed right. all of it either, and you have to commit it by right. next year. I thought you committed five hundred thousand. We did. Larry we did. Larry you yeah. committed it, but we haven't reported the commitment. That's right. actually the end of the month. Right. What I'm trying to get at is, it would be nice to have what is the first tranche been committed to? How mm -hmm. much of it's been spent? Yeah. What is the second tranche been committed to? And is any of it been not, spent? None no, of it's none been of committed. It's been none of it's been spent. So you know, we were looking at capital. So the mini this excavator's year. been. Paid for. We've had small, a couple of small bills for Leary Lot. Right. Um, I'm asking for a written document mm -hmm. that says this is what this money has been spent on. Um, that's this a detail is, that I can get from yeah, Brenda. Yeah, that's perfect. But it's not going to show you what the commitment was because no, that's I mean, not in the. I. That's what I'm asking for. So I can't give you a detail from I Brenda's accounting that. system that's, that shows right. the commitment. I, I can tell you what we committed. That's what I'm I saying. I can tell you yeah. what we spent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So we committed five hundred thousand to the Leary lot from the yes. first tranche. Yes, yes. We spent money from the remaining approximately two hundred fifty thousand, and that money has been spent. 
Some of it. Some yes. of it. Okay. And the, the equipment. The shipper. Yeah. Right. yeah. The equipment was right. purchased. And ordered, you just right. 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 Delivered. You know, because basically, you know, well, we'll we'll, we'll have to sort it out. But mm -hmm. uh, but know. this is so. This is the question that you'll need to take with you for the next few days right. prior to the hearing. But I do think that. Julie's made it clear that she's very uncomfortable with us rating all the stabilization accounts to pay for capital. Right. On the other hand, that's what cap that's what that's what for. capital accounts are for. Right. Um, it's just it leaves you nothing for emergency other right. than our general. Well, you still have to commit the money anyway, because mm -hmm. if we don't commit the money and use it, we have stand a good chance of having a portion clawed back. And that's been the warning by the accountants association, but by the STAM we, members. We could commit some of it to that Leary lot because it's well, going to be more than five. Yeah, but you sure. have to, and and you can commit it. But if you don't start spending it, and right. which is what we're trying to do, we have a meeting tomorrow about it. Every Tim's right. On every agenda, we need to be talking about that Leary lot because we we the whole intention was to get that done. Right, but we can't control what Hamshot. Right. We can know, only it's, control it's what tricky. we're doing. It's very tricky. And so yeah. I got handed the EV charger question, which now I've delegated most of it to Chris. But functionally, that wasn't part of the plan originally, which no. means it changes the scope of the contract. Right. Yeah. So let's uh, let's find a different location for the EV chargers yeah, and just to, you know forget about it. Um, I'm not saying that. It's actually a good site. It's a good site for both the state grant process for level two right and the federal grant process for level three but it adds an element of project oversight and if we're gonna do a lot of that design for the leary lot was originally done by tie and bond but you're we're adding elements that now change how we would I, develop it yeah i get that the, there's added cost when you add things to a project mm -hmm. um i'm asking the you know the question is you know, we're replacing the capital stabilization spending with ARPA spending, which is right. supposed to have been for capital projects. Not and necessarily. It's revenue replacement. Right. I realize that. You're saying that you see this as an advantage, and I'm saying I see it as a disadvantage for the biggest project we've got in this town is this campus project. And some people don't think it's a good idea, and that's fine. But we've wasted, we've spent two years developing it, and we're in the process of starting to realize it. And now the coffers are being raided, and I'm not really supporting that. Um, that's just, then that's the vote yeah. you all have to take. Right. But understand that that impact means that we, again, kick the can for right. critical equipment and or critical we, processes. Or we borrow. That's the other option. Well, you can't borrow now. I understand that. You so, can borrow and you, in the and fall. So you also need to hear from your staff. Mm -hmm. I got an email from Amy. Um, and it really knocked me sideways. So she spent six hours working on 13 building permits. Mm -hmm. Right. That is not acceptable because it means that all the other stuff that she needs to be able to do, she doesn't have time to. And so it really is that that inspection software is critical. Oh, um, yeah, I, I fully agree so, with that. But, idea. but functionally, that's what ARPA funds were intended to do is to help us because we lost revenue in certain ways to help us have the ability to put that back into what we need to do, you know, right. our planning process. But if the intent through other discussions was to take that entire second tranche, then that wasn't communicated to me effectively so that I could take it to capital. Yeah. I mean, capital's asking a question. Can we spend they are. money? On they this? are. And, and we can I'm say saying, yes or no. Yeah. Right. And, we'll figure right. and I don't expect you to decide tonight, but what I do hope is that you'll read through the breakdowns mm -hmm. and consider it because it's going to have a major impact on operations. What's left in the capital stabilization fund? Is that on here somewhere? Capital stabilization is just over 500,000. I had a note, but it's not sitting in front of me. Okay. I want to say it's about 525. Right. Because um, remaining would be 246. Right. And general stabilization is right around a million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oh. so what would be the argument for, other than the capital stabilization fund, which is exists to allow for capital expenditures mm -hmm. to go down, conceivably, we're not going to come back for another $325,000 truck um, in the next 15 or 20 years. Oh, so yeah, we are. But there's other there's <laughs> other equipment. Than I know, but I mean, what's the argument? Yeah, I, I I have more than one truck. 
<laughs> yeah. What's the argument to use ARPA in to replace capital stabilization? Uh, you know, right. I'm, I'm just trying to figure that one out. And so the intent, here's struggle. the background that I don't know. Maybe I know we should I have to this and move on. Yeah. Okay. No, I get Unless it. you think. No, we're not going to fix it tonight, but yeah. it's good to have this discussion because it is, it is, it is actually. Uh, if ARPA never happened, right, we're still needing a truck yeah. and how are we going to fund it, right? And, and ARPA was revenue replacement, great, and we can help in certain budget times because they were tight and do this, but it's gone. And, and next year, we're still going to have to buy another 300,000 piece of machinery or the next year after that. Right. So I am saying when we get to next year and all this next year, we should discuss with the town about an override to roll EMS. You need to warn them now. Roll EMS into um, our omnibus budget and to have enough money each year to put into capital stabilization so we can start paying for these equipment. And, you know, just it is expensive to live and it right. hurts to say that. But well, that's know, why the, we suggested we have been adding, adding um, staff to run the town because it has been on a shoestring for many years. We're, we're starting to get under our feet. We're tackling these big projects. Yes, it's expensive, but we're making a really good town out of it. And we have dedicated staff and volunteers to get this stuff moving right now. So it is important to think about borrowing long term for um, capital stuff and using you know an adjustment in our tax rate to then fund that you know you look at Amherst they're they're looking at a 95 million dollar elementary school they're looking at other projects over the next five years so there there are communities I know we're not Amherst we don't have Amherst money but I'm just saying we need to think about long-term capital expenditure and borrowing to do the infrastructure that's required in this I, town. And we can't apologize for it all the time. Like this is an expense to run your town. Trucks are needed. Police vehicles are needed. HVM, HVAC is needed. Um, a new building is needed. I mean, there's, there's stuff that is needed. We're going to need a new school. I mean, this thing is 30 years old. We'll get another 20 years. We got to start planning on that. You know, there's, there's expenses in the well, town. That's what it is. That's just... to the point of of using um, the second tranche of funding for the eighteen eighty eight building. That should have come through as a building as a capital project. Yeah, we haven't. Cost. I don't think we were there yet, and we weren't so. there yet. So, you know, however, comma the the intent to do that needs to be discussed, and it needs to be discussed quickly because yeah. if we don't commit those funds and start spending the money. And so my question towards that consideration is, what's the purpose? You know, what's the project goal with that $750,000? Because if we can't get to a better operating strategy just for us to perform, you know, your basic mm -hmm. tasks, then it doesn't help the rest of us when the rest of these projects balloon. Right. 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 And, and the real point about ARPA is that Okay, this is like you know, it's a one-time funding. Selling source. a piece of po a property mm -hmm. to to fund a, a one-time project, but it doesn't solve the underlying budget problem. Right, right, and and, and, and that's a bigger question. Yeah, and yep. to to back up a minute and give Tim some background is the last couple times the question of a proposition two and a half override has come up. The concerns of the board that I heard where we need to give the town a year of preparation to understand what that means. Um, in terms of capital and general stabilization, the intent of capital when they created that stabilization account, the capital one, was to have a million dollars in it before they spent out of it. And unfortunately that hasn't been able to happen because we do have a huge chunk of free cash that gets put toward an operating expense, which is right. the ambulance. So the consideration of doing prop two and a half override, which is not a popular thing. And I don't mean to be the, be the bearer of bad news, but practically speaking, um, if that's going to, that's the only way we're going to be able to pull that into the levy because mm -hmm. it's over $400,000. So, you know, just practically speaking, that's the consideration. And I think if the board is leaning toward that, we need to make that statement, warn people, because if that's the oh. concern of having a year's time to get people educated, yeah, we need to start now. I mm -hmm. agree. 
Yeah. Well, not tonight, but well, I did a little bit tonight. Mm -hmm. So you're warned, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get some more data for now, you. Kevin, I think um, maybe it was Trevor who mentioned, you know, what about dedicated stabilization fund borrowing? So like mm -hmm. you you have a rolling $10 million or $5 million stabilization fund for the DPW so that they need to replace a roof. They borrow the money. If they don't need to replace the roof or they pay it off and they need to buy a truck, they right. buy a truck. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, then it's already in the budget. It's planned. Right. Maybe you would do that in the context of, a, of an override that's as well. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah, so that's exactly what I'm thinking. Because that's what Frontier did. And that was what Brenda and I talked about and suggested a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, as you get closer to figuring out how you're going to pay for things, though, that's when everybody realizes, oh, Oh yeah, you know, maybe we, long term we, we should be planning. We approved this borrowing. We didn't realize it was going to have an impact. <laughs> <laughs> we got enough. Well, all of you that sit and listen to the budget discussions, you know that. But yeah. educating legis the legislative body is a longer process. Yeah. Uh, community compact call in center contract. What's what was this? So about? this is the contract. It's thirty thousand dollars. We received a community compact grant for succession planning, staff deployment, and inclusive inclusivity elements so okay. sort of DEI and elements um so this to help uh, understand how we're operating yes perfect it's really success because there's some for. succession planning we need to and we be aware of it. we got a grant for it. we got a grant of thirty thousand dollars but we have I have to adjust the scope of work with Collins Center um Where, it's above the 25 that no it's above the twenty five thousand dollar limit the board had previously approved me to be able to sign Okay. Um, but I went looking for the scope because Mary uh, was supposed to have sent it to me uh, by the end of last week, and I didn't see it. So, so okay. I just want you to be aware that, that it's if, coming. It's coming. Okay, that's okay. good. Um, yeah. Update on sidewalks. We said that already beginning of the yeah. meeting hours ago. <laughs> but we'll get us out of here quick. I'm, I'm really anxious yeah. to get home. So uh, really excited. New new sidewalks on Sugarloaf Street and um, both sides of. North Main Street, as far as we can go with the money we have. Um, we, we're grateful to accept the gift of a financial gift from Woman Hill, Inc. So they they sent us their their uh, gift this year. And they they did. had it here somewhere. And yeah, it was and we're grateful to all the other gifts we've Absolutely. received, I would assume. Yep, always grateful. I think I just here it is. Yep. make a point of saying that Woman Hill sent us quite a bit. More. Yes. The little operation that they absolutely right. they're, they're and it's generous. very much appreciated very generous thank you Do we um, have a number or we don't uh it was yeah 4500 yeah 4500 4, thank you yeah it's very grateful um it definitely helps us solve all the issues we've just been talking about so. <laughs> i wish we could snap our fingers and solve yep. them no, it's really closer to what they would only have absolutely no i'm very grateful yeah very grateful absolutely for it. um I remember years any, when they couldn't. We don't have appointments today or employment. No, policies. but it, okay. somebody clarify for me because I never saw something. Um, Alan Swadlin resigned from community. He did. We do need to. Ex yeah, I don't have his email. But um, we need to we accept know that. The appointing authority was for that. Um, it's us and it's it's an open space. They they nominate their own person. Okay. And then we we approve. Yeah. And yeah. then okay. you guys do the so we'll wait for Okay, because I wasn't sure. Why don't we wait for that before we? Yeah, I, mean, I just sent it in already. Because I haven't seen it. That's but... why I didn't say anything on the agenda yeah. because I hadn't seen it. No, yeah. we just have to have an open space to point someone out. So we'll have okay. to send. Maybe you'll send they that did email meet a couple to you. Weeks you didn't ago. get the email then. Okay, so I'll forward it to you so okay. you have it. And we can Thank get you. it on the agenda. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess uh, back to the budget discussion. We kind of skipped over real quick. Is there? Is there any budget discussion, really? Um, so we were having you... trouble printing the uh, budget report for you. Um, no, it's out here. It it all printed eventually. I Brenda and I couldn't get into our couldn't get into our computers to to print everything out when we wanted to right before right at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, there were a few changes in. The report that I just wanted everybody to see. You'll it will be helpful for tomorrow's meeting to talk to finance. Oh, um, there was an increase in one of the revenue lines, and I believe it was meals and rooms tax uh, from three hundred twenty thousand to three hundred fifty thousand. And I think there'll be some discussion about not only those revenue sources, but some of the other budgets that I know the finance committee has been concerned about. 
So I just wanted you to have something to reference that you could take home and chew on if you wanted to. Um, okay, and then sounds good. Your meetings at five. The meeting is at five thirty tomorrow. Unfortunately, I have a a previous commitment That's that fine. I had to make some rearrangements. Okay, for, so and I um, I have a master meeting at uh, four thirty. Mm -hmm. Get so, here as soon as you can, or you pop on when you can, I, I kind of thing. Switch over to Zoom. Okay. Um, as soon yeah. as I can. Yeah. Probably be like quarter six, maybe. I know many people probably aren't watching, but maybe when this gets replayed again, um, the Union uh, 38 Field Hockey Spring Clinic is uh, going to start April 11th. Um, it goes April 11th, 25th, May, May 2nd, 9th, 16th. And 23rd, Tuesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. at the Deerfield Academy Turf Field. It's on the north side of the track. You take Albany Road to the end, turn right. <clears throat> track is down the hill on the right. Registration forms can be found online at www.deerfieldma.us. Uh, more info at the rec, rec, Deerfield Rec Department. Um, equipment pickup is April 11th at the DA Field at 5.30. Uh, equipment will be sticks and shin guards. Registration is $25. Equipment deposit is 50. Separate check, please, um, Town of Deerfield. So that's really fun. They're doing that again. Um, Pilates exercise classes, April 25th through June 20th on Tuesdays from four, uh, 5.45 to 6.45 p.m. at the Deerfield Elementary School, all levels. Um, it's like 76.50 for nine weeks for Deerfield residents, 81.50 for non-residents. Um, so again, Deerfield Rec Department, if you want to get involved with that. I also noticed um, in my email that um, Historic Deerfield says celebrate spring with them. They're they're open. They've got up, upcoming, uh, there's a new exhibition, uh, Gardens of Heart, um, Garden of Hearts, and then there's all kinds of up updated events uh that that exhibit kicks uh kicks off april 22nd online you can find all kinds of good things so they're they're open for the season and having fun all kinds of good stuff so check out historic deerfield um anything else we missed tonight um chris curtis's contract chris and i haven't touched base yet okay um now that we're in the middle of trying to get all the warrant and motions and all that stuff, it, it I had trouble getting in touch with Jeff okay. too. So we have an MVP tomorrow, right? Right. That's um, posted for select board, right? Right. Yes. Are you going to do Zoom or are you going to be? I'm going to be here. Okay. I'll try to get here. I have a nine o'clock, but I, I should be done soon enough to come drive down here. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice to just get this done tomorrow. Sign. Um, so if you have a printout of the contract. Yeah, we'll, we'll print that out yeah. first thing in the morning. And I, I just need um, the, um, I have to ask about the, for the church, the fire watch, would that be uh, enough for, um, you know, the exit signs? So I need the insurance number. Uh, agents. Talking about Jennifer Bono? I guess so. Yeah. Whoever, whoever has our property insurance. That's Jennifer. Okay, um, so it's Maya, call. but through Cab Cabot Risk is the underwriter. Um, I just need your phone number. I don't have it in front of me, but I could send it yeah, to you. No, I just need you to text it. My phone wasn't working, and I thought I texted you that. Oh. And it, so. Because I didn't see anything. Um, okay. All so right. Let me write myself a note to give her a number. I just have to verify that the fire watch, having hurt or somebody from the fire department. Okay, so she's going to get you a phone number? Yep. Yeah. We can make Great. a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>